What's up, everyone? That was a nice, smooth transition there. That was a nice, smooth transition. Uh, tweaked my ankle. Um, doing a thing I shouldn't have been doing. Um, it's, a, it's not as bad as it was. I just pushed it a little too hard. Um, expecting a little too much from it. Um, this early on it's healing. It's healing. It's legitimately healing. I just pushed it a little far. That's all. So it's not like a huge setback, but it, you know, one step forward, two steps back as is tradition with me as is tradition. Oh, but on the good news front, I suppose, um, yes, yeah, Rev, um, <clears throat> um, so when I started, okay, so we all know I'm stick thin, right? I'm stick thin. I, I have like a climber's body. I, I've never put any work into developing any muscle mass. I was a sprinter for fuck's sake, right? Um, when I started this little experiment, um, I was like, my bicep was 10 and a quarter inches, which is nothing. It's fucking nothing. It's uh, 12.1 right now. So I'm coming up on two inches of gain in my bicep flexed. Um, so yeah, like I said, I've put on a bunch of muscle actually in these past few months. Um, <laughs> nice rev. Um, yeah, gains, gains, bro, gains. Um, it doesn't like you barely ever, because like it, you know, when you're extended like this, it's difficult to even see though. There is where there wasn't once was even a bulge there. Um, no, um, Brooke, it's right there. Look on screen. It's right there. You still got it. Um, <laughs> uh, but I mean, when I do stuff like that, you can see. Yeah, like that's tricep, bicep. Like it's it's coming along. It's coming along. I'm not making as much gains as some gym bros would, right? I'm not doing 200 grams of protein a day plus fucking spending five hours in the gym. Um, but it's there. Thank you, Angie. Um, it's there. Like it's there by weight. It's there by by measure. So if by measure weight is a measure, it's, it's there, it's there by tape measure. It's there by, um, weight as well. Um, so it's coming along. I've started to work on the core a little bit more as well. Um, do the like inflammation in my like intestines. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to get that perfectly flat abdomen again. I, I just have too much of a bulge in the lower abdomen. Um, don't worry, I can, I can do the trick, right? Slight lean, slight turn, compress, uh, uh, you know, compress muscle and everything just goes, right? Like, like all the fucking bodybuilders do. Um, I know the trick, but it is starting to come in up above and on the sides as well. Again, um, I don't think I'm ever going to chase that eight pack again. Dude, that eight pack is a lot fuck. For those of you who don't know how much work an eight pack is, have you tried getting a six pack? Yeah. All right, kids. It's a lot of fucking work. It's a lot of fucking work. Um, I'm probably never going to chase that again, but start working on the core again as well. Um, I only have two chins left. Fuck yeah, Zippy. Hey, gains are gains, right? Fucking take the win. Uh, so what we hear is that the sexual attraction ransoms have, uh, for is now a second, uh, have a two inch influx like them biceps. Um, look, look, now I'm starting to feel like my fluffy ass needs to get back to working out. It does, but not because you're fluffy, Ace, but because it's good for you. It's good for you psychologically. It's good for you physically. Uh, how does one gain weight in Light Me? Kvass, it takes a lot of fucking work. I'll tell you that right now. If you're a hard gainer, it takes a lot of fucking work. F p overweight people have <laughs> very like I feel the pain on the other side of it but you have no idea how much fucking work it is to gain weight when you're a hard gainer um 
Okay, I'll talk. Okay. I ain't taking that super dick, right? The first thing that popped in my head, nonsense, was when I saw that Superman was by was Mr. Hands. That was the first fucking thing that popped into my head was say hello to anal rupture. All right, say hello to intestinal rupture. All right, ain't nobody taking that super dick. Ain't nobody taking that super dick. Are you shitting me? We were, like had to have the conversation about whether Wonder Woman was Wonder Woman's uterus was strong enough to like take fucking the OG Superman. You gonna be coming at me with some fucking buy shit? Who the fuck is super the new Superman gonna fuck up the ass? You got a candidate? Because Jesus, goddamn Christ. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> need a weaker dick. Uh, Hulk? Wait, wrong company. Crossover with the Hulks. Yeah, like that's, I mean... He a bottom? Oh! Oh, even better! Even better, Zippy! Whoop, there goes your dick. You bet you best have a dick made out of fucking kryptonite or some shit because that shit just shoop, and there's your dick gone. Yeah. I saw the picture. Um, I saw the picture of like it's um some Asian dude. I don't know. Like it looked he looked vaguely Asian to me. That's that's that's, that's who he, I saw the picture of him making out with some dude. That's some twinky Asian dude. <laughs> Um, Ace, it's it's fucking weird these days. To be perfectly honest, it's fucking weird, Ace. Uh, or the uh, oh, the explosive jizz proposal. No, I'm telling you, ain't nobody. Superman lives a sexless life. Oh yeah, I saw. I I, I saw. Angie, I saw a fucking China banning fucking queers in video games and effeminate characters in video games and shit like that. It's f- but hey, it's the people's homophobia. Fucking right. Yeah, right. right? Like, you gotta shove like a kryptonite jade egg up fucking Superman's ass to be able to actually have sex with him. Um, fuzzy. It happens. Um, I, skeptic. I, look, you know. Does Superman even have a bottle? Does Superman piss and shit? That's gotta be comic lore somewhere, right? Like, somebody's gotta know this. One of you fucking nerds has to know this shit. If not, I'll ask Zealot. Zealot would know. Does does Superman have, an, like, an excre- uh, excretory system? Like, I don't... I don't know. I mean, kept. Yeah, like, I don't fucking. He's got a bulge at least. I mean, just. I mean, reproductive organs, but are they excretory or uh, as well? Uh, thanks, James. Um, J- okay, James, thanks. But do you know if Superman pisses and shits? And uh, pisses and or shits. Hang on. Does Superman. This shit. Does Superman need to urinate or defecate? Uh, Okay, well, there's a, a giant fucking discussion on it. But...
We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. The answer is we don't know. Holy shit. So apparently, DC has never actually given full lore about this. What we do know is if he's in sunshine mode, 100% of his metabolic processes derive their, pro uh, their power from radiant energy that he absorbs from the stars. It, it is presumed that his digestive process is as vu invulnerable as the rest of him, so he doesn't suffer significantly due to inactivity of weeks or months between meals. Now... As to whether his how efficient his digestive system is, can it process 100% of what he takes in, whereas humans only uh, manage to process about 14% of the matter that we consume? DC has never given in a proper primer on the biology of Kryptonians, so we have no actual lore as to whether or how effective their digestive process is when compared to humans. It is hinted that the genome of the Kryptonians has been highly modified, particularly in the Man of Steel movies and the very earliest works of Siegel and Schuster. Such modifications could include a more efficient biological process, reducing the need for eating as well as energy extraction. So we don't know. The long and short of it is we're not entirely sure. <laughs> oh. Yellow sun, yellow suns, yellow suns. He's 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 powered by the the thing that gives him the superpower is the the power of the the radiant energy from yellow suns. This much I know. Um <laughs> The truly divisive comic discussion, not Superman being by, but does he shit? I mean, that's, that's the question, because if Superman's bi, traditional bisexual or homosexual male of sexual interaction includes, to some extent or another, some anal play, right? So, is Superman receptive? If so, then, foomp, he better have some really good muscle control, because one good contraction, and you don't have a dick anymore. Two... If he is a receptive partner and he does have a digestive process, holy crap, like what what is what is super shit like? Right? Like I I, I don't even wanna <sighs> three, if he isn't the receptive partner and he is uh, he is the penetrative partner, then holy crap, Superman's gonna blow your guts out, man. Like he is gonna wreck you. Um, his jizz is just going to pop out the top of your head. You just could be like a bullet through you. Um, so yeah, sexuality when discussing Superman is always a weird thing because it's like, dude, like traditionally you could just talk about Wonder Woman or some shit like that, but bisexual Superman is a whole other ball game. How can we clip this discussion? Talk about destroying a bathroom. Beasticle, that was actually part of that discussion that I was looking at was if Superman can take, does need to and can take a shit, does he need a super crapper as well? Because will he just like poof through the bottom of any standard porcelain toilet? That was a part of the discussion as well. Yes, that, that has been brought up as well. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Rev, it was, yeah. Um, ha, <laughs> Angie. Um, Mountain of French Toast. Good on you. Uh, Superman. What was it? What was it? Super. Uh, Superman can give the world a hando while sending the world back in time. <laughs> For the follow. Um. Yeah. Oh yeah. Rumble. Yeah, this has been discussed at length by comic book nerds for years and years and years now. Yeah.
Ace, sometimes you got to talk about it. Shotgun blast springs to mind. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna do a job. It's gonna do a fucking job. More questions and answers. Exactly. And fucking DC is such a bunch of pussies about it. They won't let their writers. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure writers have written about it. I am 100% sure that writers have written about it. You know DC fucking nixes that shit. You you know DC's like, mm-mm. It's like the uh, porn drawing book over at DC. There's probably a fucking collection of stories and or drawings from DC writers and artists over the years. That it's just like... No, <laughs> none of this is allowed. Um, hey, Fina. Uh, Clown, we were talking about Superman being bi, but more importantly, we were talking about Superman's excretory processes, digestive processes, and whether Superman would be a receptive or penetrative partner or even a switch. Um, or that he's verse. Um, and then the consequences of that. Uh, from an anatomical point of view of you getting your dick chopped off or Superman blowing your guts out and jism shooting out through the top of your head. And we were discussing it seriously. Eh, we were talking about uh, working out and um, physicality before that, but... Um, to, well, perfect, the topic I live for. Well, do you have an opinion? Because is, is, from what I could tell from my quick research, DC has never weighed in on this matter. We have no lore concerning the actual uh, tr like underlying digestive biology of Kryptonians. We have no lore concerning that. Like, We don't know. So it's like up to pure speculation. So you got any opinions? Um, this is why we need to abolish copyright. People must be free to explore these important questions. I know, right? Uh, please don't tell me it's Colonizer's Day, boo. Yeah, oh yeah, it's Columbus Day. Um, fucking, that's <laughs> why. Merry Columbus Day, everyone. Uh, straining the freedom to operate as you please defeats and attacks any love for a position a person may have. Have you ever seen the Prime series, The Boys? Uh, they kill a superhuman with uh, impenetrable skin by shoving a bomb up his arse. Yes, I saw it. That's season one. That's the only part of The Boys I've watched is season one. I did, did not watch season two. I was happy. Um, I was happy with season one. It, I didn't need to keep going. I hit the end of season one and was like, you know what? I'm happy with that story. I'm content. Like I tapped. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm done with the boys as far as I'm concerned. Maybe one day I'll go back and watch season two or more if they continue. Um, okay. So he'd definitely be a switch pillow prince or service top. He, but here's the thing clown. Like he's got to have amazing sphincter control. Like, amazing sphincter control. Because he has... Dude, you hit that shit good one time. Just nail that Kryptonian prostate a couple of times. And he's going to fucking clench down. And I'll tell you as a bottom myself... Dude, like, I... You know, as long as you're not all blown out from getting railed all night long or wearing plugs or whatever. Um, fucking... You can, you can clamp down pretty hard. Um, Superman's sphincter muscles have they got to have the power to just chop that dick right off so superman has to have the control muscle control to be able to like in the moment of bliss and pleasure that uh, to not just snap your fucking dick clean off and he's got to have the control mid orgasm to like not completely wreck your guts and i don't know what a fucking super orgasm looks like but goddamn that sperm's got to be coming out at some at a clip so like we we have some we have some physiological incompatibility. So I do not think super uh, Superman is going to be fucking or be fucked by any humans under normal circumstances. Let's just put it that way. Um, clown. I I, I, I know exactly. I completely agree. I want to know. Uh, does Superman have a dick up his ass regularly? I mean, y'all weird. Hancock. Hancock. Um, see, Hancock would have explored this. Hancock was like toxic male cisgendered straight though, so that wouldn't have fucking gone there. Um, yeah, I, dude, I wish I were bi. It'd be fun. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I wish. Like, I want the full transhumanist shit. Everybody knows that. I want to be both male and female. I want to be pan. I want to be like, let's just, I just want all of it. Seems a lot more fun. 
if I'm if my ass is sore from taking it up the ass and fucking push a button and get a vagina or I can just switch to being a top for a while or you know like it's honestly I envy like the sort of like pansexual crew um kryptonite plug see that Aka that's what we were speculating is you gotta have like a kryptonite like plug up his ass or like a kryptonite cock ring or something something you gotta you gotta bring him down to mortal level a little bit and but it from what I understand he'd have to be a masochist too because anytime Bruce exposed um uh um anytime Batman expo exposed um Superman to kryptonite it was a painful process it wasn't just like, oh, and I'm weak now. It was, oh my fucking God, this is this is not pleasant to have happen. So he's either got to be a full-blown masochist on top of that, or he's got to be willing to be like in pain every single time he wants to get laid, which is a whole other fucking ball game. Right? Like that's service for a fucking dick if there ever was. <laughs> Rumble. Uh, so, like, what are you suggesting? Do you think he loses any sense of sexual attraction when coming to Earth? It goes more on an asexual life when coming to Earth? I don't know what I'm suggesting, to be perfectly honest, clown. I, 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 I'm just exploring the physiological uh, realities of what it would mean to be a, a godlike entity surrounded by mortals. Right? Like, it's got to be difficult to get your fucking rocks off. No matter what your whether no matter what your thing is, whether you want to dick up your ass or whether you want to put a uh, put a dick in an ass, it doesn't fucking matter. It's gotta be it's gotta be a whole thing. Like, is 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 Clark going to Bruce and being like, "Hey, can you do me a favor?" Well, of course, anything, Clark. What can I do for you? Well, it's kind of a sensitive topic. Well, most things we we do. Clark are sensitive. It's the end of the world most of the time for what we. Yeah, I know, but it's it's of a different nature. Well, anything we've been we've been acquaintances and friends for years now. Just what do you need? I need a kryptonite butt plug. <laughs> now, does does Bruce Wayne? The master detective, the most genius detective on the face of the planet, already have a contingency for that? Has he already thought of that? That one day, knowing the physiology of Superman and knowing his predilections, will he come to me with the need for, and a fuck, he pushes a button and a fucking drawer pops out, and there's already a kryptonite cock ring and a kryptonite butt plug to match. Because he's got contingency plans for everything. For everything. Except for Flash. Because who could predict Flash, right? Yeah, exactly. Bruce says there are like 10 different sizes. Like, yes, like that's, that would have to be the lore, right? Like it would have to align. So there you go. Uh, come dump Superman is trapped in a wall next to a bucket of kryptonite for mortal enjoyment. That's hot weather. Uh, Death Columbus Lambeck. Uh, oh, Lambeck. Oh, um, you have to double archive this video. Um, maybe his biological setup uh, sets itself to human-like settings. Maybe he's super fertile. Even dude gets pregnant. Um, so he would have to. Okay, so we know he he is in constant control. Thank you, clown. We know he's in constant control because he has that conversation with. Who is it? Is it Dark Side? I forget. Um, he 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 um, he he has that moment where he thanks them because he's he's constantly afraid of breaking things and constantly holding back. And for once, he gets to actually use force. Um, so we know Superman is capable of restricting and maintaining continually. Um, above, above original, um, you mean this stuff over here? 
If you want to see it, I can I can show it to you. There you go. Hang on. Let me get that into my um, capture. There you go. Um. Supremely submissive and breedable. Oh, and he'd have the best fucking. Oh God, I envy him. His dude, dude, he could take, he could take dick all night long. Like he could take dick forever. He's got like a super sphincter, right? Like it's never gonna get tired. It's never gonna wear out. It's never gonna get sore. Oh my God, I would kill for his sphincter. Right? Like that's, I don't, I don't need all the muscle. Just give me the, the like the nerve tissue and the, the like the skin, right? Like he could just forever. For fucking ever. It'd be amazing. Um. Well, I mean, narrator. See, here's the thing. It's all surrounding a um, discussion about Superman's, uh, Superman coming out as bi... Well, the new Superman coming out as bisexual. And you better believe that shit's going to be political. People are going to lose their fucking mind. Ah, the fucking LGBTQ fucking agenda is making Superman queer now. It's going to be a thing. It's already a thing, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. We just speed ran it to its, uh, to its end conclusion. We're like, yeah, 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 Superman's bi. But. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's just all we did. Well, like, yeah, sure, 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 sure. I get it. You know, Superman queer, I get it. Bad, you know, but what are the ramifications of that? Uh, he's the son. Superman has a bi son. So there you go. Like, the, he's the new Superman. Whatever. It's fucking Superman's kid. By the way, they had to make him bi. They couldn't make him gay. Just pointing that out. Or, or, or here's, here's a fun one. Could have made it. Tra could have made Superman trans. Imagine, imagine people losing their fucking minds over that one. Oh, that would have been great. That would have been great. I would have loved to have seen that one. Fucking dick girl, super <laughs> Superman girl dick. Oh, that would, dude. They'd lose their fucking minds. Oh, I'd be there. I'd be there for that. I'd be there for that in an instant. Oh, all those fucking angry Gamergate comic book nerd types just malding. Just malding. <laughs> I would love it. Super trans. Oh, that would. Oh, it'd be brilliant. Oh, God, it would be delicious. No, they, they were they, they were pussies. They went by. Uh, no, if you paid me a hundred bucks, I don't necessarily work for you. I was an independent IT consultant for years and years and years. People paid me and I didn't work for them. I was an independent consultant. Even my tax status stated as such. So are you going to pay me a hundred bucks? We can, we can continue this asinine conversation and line of inquiry. If you pay me a hundred bucks. Um, Angie, I'd love to see that poll and who conducted it. Um, do you have a rap video you're trying to play? That'd be great. Yeah, you got a Christian rap video you want me to watch? It costs men money to show those on air, though. Um, writing would have to be really good or you get heat from all sides. Um, you see, this is why copyright needs to be abolished. We could make a whole spin off series of NB Superman. That's fair rumble. Uh, Petro Petrona, bring it. Um, I'm down. Let's see. Yes, yes, exactly, clown. I, I, I agree. 
I agree. They 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 they're already pushing the boundaries with this one. They can get away with buy because well, we just don't like pussy, and you know, fucking. There was that one time in college, I you know, and we don't talk about that though. So they can get away with it. Yeah. Um. So what you're what you're saying is you'd rather have um, Stephen Colbert and um, who was the other one? Um, who played uh, who played Gary? It was Stephen Colbert and I forget which one of the other Daily Show correspondents. Either way, um, that's who you'd rather have as president. All right, think about it. Uh, trans and pan Supergirl when. Supergirl dick. Um, push into yeah, exactly, clown. Like they're they're right there on that edge. Like they're they're mm, it's it's risky what they're doing now. Um, there's gonna be pushback, but eventually it'll just sort of eh, whatever. It'll blow over. Steve Carell. That's who it was. It was Steve Carell. So what you're what you're saying is you would rather have Stephen Colbert and Steve Carell. As president and vice president instead of Biden and Kamala. Okay. I think you might be afraid of their agenda. Um, Clark can't coming out as Polly. Clark has always been... Clark is literally like the defining... Like the, the, the quintessential stereotypical cisgendered heterosexual white American stand-up for God and country male. Right? Like, that's that's what he is. That's what he has always been. And to retcon him at this point is kind of uncomfortable even for me. Right? Like, don't don't retcon him. Don't retcon him. That's just uncomfortable. Um, you know, fucking, oh, Clark Kent in his old age decides he wants to start sucking dick. It just feels wrong. It just feels wrong. Just use one or the other. Just make a new character. Just... Even I don't agree with that. John Stewart would is completely competent tech. Um, you have to give the people what they want, but also it's going to be forgotten about within three weeks. Nothing else is going to be said, and I don't think anything else will. Yeah, exactly. So Twitter trend headline, a recent interview with uh, Pedestrian TV do, uh, about their upcoming series exploring UFO phenomenon, a uh, phenomenon, a uh, phenomena. Uh, Demi, Lov Demi Lovato spoke about extraterrestrial life and said, I think that we have to stop calling them aliens because aliens is a derogatory term for anything. Demi Lovato is stupid. Who's Demi Lovato again? She's a singer, right? Singer? Pop star? Pop pop singer? Either way, she's stupid. Um Just roll up a new character, Kai and the DM. Exactly. Just fucking just make a new character. Stop trying to retcon everything. Ugh. She's a pop star. Does drugs sometimes. I'm supposed to care about her. Okay, cool. Yep, she's an idiot. We have to stop calling extraterrestrials aliens because aliens is a derogatory term. No, bitch. It's a synonym for extraterrestrial and has been for fucking years. Shut the fuck up. What the fuck? Fucking A. Woke scolds are going to show up at a UFO landing and people are like, oh my God, it's aliens. And they're going to immediately start woke scolding you. That is a derogatory term and you should not be using it because you are exhibiting your white upper class privilege. And if you understood the origin of that term, you would not debase yourself or those other creatures, those valuable, honorable, intelligent creatures from beyond the stars, the way you have right now. Just saying, that's what it's going to look like. Jesus Christ, people, take it down a fucking month. Don't say the A word. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, that's that's a perfect sketch, by the way. Woke scolds at a fucking a, a UFO landing. That's a good sketch. 
Somebody should knock that out. That's a fucking solid concept. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> nah, fuck them ETs. Possibly, literally, hopefully. Uh, then they melt all our faces. Yes. I feel like she tried to add, uh, about the term, uh, uh, but also a better term. Shut up and say, yeah. Um, is Demi Lovato the top woke skull now? <laughs> we, we, we prefer Centauri Americans. <laughs> oh. Yep, no A words. Um. It's just fucking aliens is a derogatory term. We should start. Oh my god, what was it? What was the exact quote? Hold on, I want to see it again. I want to see it again. Um, I think that we have to stop calling them aliens because aliens is a derogatory term for anything. For anything. Okay, that doesn't even make sense linguistically. Yeah, Demi Lovato's an idiot. I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> yeah, Skeptic, China's on a fucking tear about, like, femboys and queers and shit like that. But don't worry. It's, uh, um, it, it's, it's the people's homophobia. Um, in a recent, uh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, you didn't have to repost it, nonsense. I was just going to scroll up and find it. Um... <laughs> Centauri, what is every Latin pe person from uh, Mexico now? Uh, tech support, yes. Haven't you heard? Yeah, every everything south of the U.S. is just Mexico. It's been that way for years and years and years. It's just they're all Mexicans. That student's fucking Fox News has been doing that shit unironically for years now. Fucking Mexicans fleeing across, uh, uh, flooding the border. It's like they're from Guatemala. Mexicans flooding the border. They're from Guatemala. Like we said, Mexicans flooding the border. <laughs> like, fuck, this has been doing that shit unironically for years. Fucking, yeah. What about Vuvuzuela? Yeah, exactly. Um, nice. Nice, Caboose. Congratulations. Um, the feminization of young American men has been executed magnificently. It's, yeah, it it is magnificent, isn't it? It's fucking sexy and hot. I wish I were one of them. Dude, if I had to go uh, do it again all over again, 18, yeah, I'd go femboy for sure. Fucking crush that testosterone. Fucking fem it up a bunch. Fucking mm, look good. Look good. I do like that stress. Um... Which I wouldn't go like full tits. I just, you know, soften it up. Androgyny. Big fan of androgyny. Big fan. I think it's a great look. I can't really pull it off, especially at this age. But I, I big fan of androgyny. Yeah. I, I have always liked the concept, the the aesthetic of androgyny. Eh, male, female, who cares? Can't figure it out one way or the other. It's a good look. Um <laughs> Soft officer, uh, fucking, uh, if China, <laughs> if China mandates being straight, the U.S. has to mandate being gay. Don't let the statist anarcho-communists win. Uh, they're not anarcho-communists by a long shot, but they are centralizing authoritarians, but they aren't communists either. They're dengus, which is just state capitalism. So don't let, uh, don't let the centralizing authoritarian state capitalists win. Uh, Soft officer, uh, <laughs> fix that. Uh, I'm telling you, mandatory hormone blockers in 20, until 25. Rev, I'm I'm on board with it. I'm on board with it. It's that's where you cannot consent to anything until age 25. Therefore, everybody should have um, uh, mandated puberty blockers until the age of 25. Yep, 100%. Um, you heard on a stream that the word tanky is a racist, a racial slur, skeptic. I'm sure it was a tanky that said that too. Um, 
clown. Everybody, you have to be over 18. You got to be over 18. You'd go David Bowie. Bowie was amazing for twos. Bowie was amazing. Androgyny can make my pee-pee feel funny, and I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I'm with a tech support. I mean, you know, I mean, when I, I mean, I'm a little manned up today. I got the fucking scruff. I got the fucking hat and shit. But you should see me like full. I'm serving a dom mode, right? I'm fucking hairless. I'm fucking shaved, uh, shaved clean. I'm fucking, you know, and when you see this completely like head to toe hairless entity that is fairly well defined, I've got a fairly well defined body, not no very little body fat. So I don't have like the adult levels of body fat on me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I definitely don't read necessarily as traditionally masculine for sure. I'm just in that Demi category of little of this, little of that, especially if I was just wearing a skirt, um, and or panties. <laughs> of course it was silver. Of course it was, Skeptic. Um, oh, no, you're a baby clown. You're a fucking baby. Um, wow. Whoa, this poor guy is sick. Hey, Recreational, you want to come on the air and talk about it? Come on, Recreational. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it's literally, literally, I have a fucking animated rainbow D-Gen logo in the corner. There's pinks and blues. The entire background is fucking pink. Uh, what, what, what did you think? What do you think? How did you think we were going to roll? Did you think this was like fucking cisgendered, heterosexual, fucking white dude, 1950s techno brain chat? How do you think this was going to play out? Kaiser? Kaiser, you know I love you. You know I love you, man. There is no fucking way in hell you can pull off androgyny. You do not, dude. You read, you read, dude, from a mile away. Even, even in the skirt, man. Even in the skirt, just like me. I'm sorry, Kaiser. I love you with all my heart, bro. But there's no fucking way you pull off androgyny. Ah. <laughs> uh. Pink is a dope color, though. Uh, and uh, Nat Cartier, thank you for that follow. Um, but you look good in the skirt, man. Hey, non-binary. You look adorable in the skirt. Don't get me wrong. Um, lots of dudes look good. But... Nah, bro. <laughs> um, hey, Rye. Hey, stress. You gonna you gonna jump on the air and have a conversation with me? You seem you seem you seem like you got a little you got your panties in a little bit of a bunch over other people's behavior in life. And you want to talk it out, man? Like I'll totally have the conversation with you. You jump on Discord. I'll bring you on the air. It's no big deal. You can run it from your your phone's browser even. Um. <laughs> a lot of almost as if some people almost as if people believe in some sort of kind of binary. Ah, uh, no worries, Cassie. No worries, um, Cassidy. Um, Caboose and Karina are both taking a crack at reducing the the DGen logo to something that's cuttable on a vinyl cutter. Um, what I'll do is when it's done, when we have like a vector file for you to work with, I'll send it over to you and we'll do non vinyl cuts or at least some like basic vinyl cuts. Um, and then we we can do some test cuts rather than like do the, the, the rainbow stuff right out of the gate. Um, and then so like that's that is moving forward, Cassidy. Hey, Bobby. 
Um, <laughs> rock on, Bobby. Um, of course not. Of course you don't. Of course you don't. You just want to sit and chat and fucking make comments about like, oh, these fucking degenerates. These, oh, look, they're sick, man. They're sick. Um, and Cassidy Caboose has just, um, said hit, is said to hit him up on discord or Caboose send Cassidy a DM either way. He, he needs more specifics about the sort of like cut the, the cutter itself. Please. And thank you. Love the synergy. Um, and maybe just maybe we can get a proudly degen product line off the ground and who knows? I mean, that one kid fucking started a t-shirt company and ended up making millions a year just by fucking doing shitty t-shirts. Uh, so we'll see what we can maybe do. I don't even, what was your original question, stress? Um, oh, I can do those, Bobby. Bobby, I can do those. I've got a 3D printer. I can do, like, that's not a big deal. I even have, like, it's been a while since you guys saw, like, I mean, I've even got, like, tokens and sort of shit. What do we got? Nine reasons why Christopher Columbus was a murderer, tyrant, and scoundrel. Does anybody really need those reasons? He's a fucking, dude, the guy's a fucking idiot and a monster. Uh, have you um, ever created freely and authentically without any external controls? Okay, so are you going to hit me with some philosophical position of no man is an island? Because if you are, then there's no point in going down that avenue. Otherwise, um, yeah, I was a custom programmer. I was doing custom programming at age 14. I was an independent IT consultant by age 25. I've created and given freely every all, all of my material all of my essays, my photography, my uh, streams, everything I've ever written, created, or put into the internet otherwise is all licensed under Creative Commons share alike. Um, so, like, not only have I created freely um, without, like, external control, I've taken that creation and given it to the world for free. Um, one of my essays is used in a script uh, in a school and a, um, a higher learning facility, um, in Thailand. Um, also it's used by a uh, union group, um, as well. So yeah. Yeah. To a huge extent. Um, I've participated in and contributed to numerous open source, uh, projects over the years as well. Um, as well as, you know, blah, 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 blah. So yeah. Are there real? Uh, there's still like Columbus statues. Like, haven't we? Jesus Christ! I almost have a good beadwork pattern for Cappy. Problem is, I'm using trials and can't screenshot. Um, Rev, just take a picture of the screen or something. Nice nonsense. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, Kaiser, that's rough. That's rough. So stress. What's up, man? I answered your question. Anything? Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here for Proudly Radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, well, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact... Quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. NGM. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now, I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Uh, Rye, the one that's being taught and used um, the most is the uh, tent poles essay. So if you wanted an exclamation tent poles, we'll take you right there. One word, T-E-N-T-P-O-L-E-S, tent poles. Um, it's utilized as a um, example of political analysis of power dynamics within a structured system. Um, last time I had heard. Also, it's being used by a um, pro-union group. 
um, and a organization um, Thailand and also in and around Southeast Asia for unionization. Um, one of the, I'd have to look him up, but one of the um, leaders of a fucking, like uh, one of the heads of an NGO out there contacted me last year, something like that, a while ago and said uh, we wanted to use it for, we wanted to translate it and use it for distribution and that sort of thing. I was like, yeah, it's fine. Um, just, you know, attribution and all of that. Um, but yeah, um, my, despite my not updating that, that constantly and my low output of writing, my website is hugely like, it's not hugely trafficked, but it's trafficked more than you would think. I average usually between, um, 20 and 35,000 visitors a month, um, reading my essays. That's yeah. Like that's, it's a thing. It's a thing. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge content producer. I'm not a prolific writer, but what I write is usually super useful. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> nice boss. Um, so yeah. So stress. I answered your question, man. Just nothing. Just nothing. Have you ever created? Yeah, I have. All the time. And I give it freely to the world. So what's up? Where were you going with that? What was the point of the line of inquiry? Did you have a point? Can you conceive of somebody giving of themselves without expectation of return? Is that even a thing that you can imagine? Because a lot of people can't. A lot of people are so set upon by the sort of neoliberal capitalist framework that they can't possibly... They, dude, everything is monetiz monetizable. Everything is about that monetization, right? If I, if, I, if I make it, you're paying me for it, right? Like there's... And I get it. I get it. The constraints and pressures of capitalist system, the fact that everything costs something, the fact that you have to feed yourself and house yourself and clothe, you, clothe yourself and provide your own medication. I get it. Like I get where that pressure comes from, but I can also see a way out. I, I have vision enough for, for a few of us to be like, yeah, you know, there are, there are alternatives, right? So I'm guessing he just bit, just bitched out. Yep, he just bitched out. Yep, he just left. When when he couldn't hit me with some fucking bullshit straw man retort, he just left. Um, if anybody remembers, remember the next time recreational stress is here, next time you see that name in chat, say something, remind me about this incident and how he asked me whether I created something, etc. right? Or just remind me if you're around when he's around and you happen to remember, remind me that way, you know, we can bring it up. We have an unfinished conversation. Oh, I know, Cupcake. I know. I know. But I want to I want to finish this conversation. <laughs> well, a lot of, wait, remember what? What's going on? Um Pop out and then what's his name? All right, let's see. I want a history of this. 
Oh, okay. So everybody knows Holy Flesh's first comment on this channel was um, November 9th of last year. And the first thing that they ever said was, you are uh, you, not Y-O-U, just you. You are all dirty commies and globalists. Alex Jones was right about everything. So just contextualize appro accordingly. Just contextualize accordingly. There you go. Um, yeah. Well, Alex Jones is a supporter of anarchism, so I don't know, like, we've got, even got an audio clip of him saying it. So, yeah, you're right. He, he is correct. Um... I mean, somebody who's been around that long. Hey, Holy Flesh, you want to come on the air and talk? Oh, Fina. Oh, uh, I'm I'm sure. <laughs> He's, he's, he's even done the Jews, but with zeros. He even knows how to evade auto mod successfully. J00S, right? Like he, he, he's, he's, he talks about IQ unironically, um, that sort of shit, right? <sighs> yeah. So all you're doing is playing into his victim mentality. Ooh, who's posting? What's over here? Oh yeah, chicken rub. Yeah, I know that stuff. Um, over fifty bands, not bad. That's impressive. That's actually impressive. And not ha not having the account actually pulled by Twitch. That's the impressive part. Being banned on over fifty channels and not being reported for uh, and getting your account removed by Twitch. That's actually kind of impressive. Interesting. Okay, that is weird. <laughs> Wait, did somebody fuck that up? Russ Publica, chlorophyll is for plants, chloroform is for kidnapping. It's not though. It takes so long. Uh, no, we don't, Fina. Um, if anybody's got an API command for that, like, uh, um, then I could probably implement it. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. Marcus, um, I've actually considered um, something similar, but no. Um, tech support. I, I forbid Posada Bot from operating on this channel. I find it wholly uh, unethical um, for the space that I operate in, and I critique it heavily. I critique the left's use of it heavily. Um... The name is cringeworthy unto itself. I hate that name. I hate that name. That is super fucking cringe. And then, um, yeah. Like, how are... You know what? Let's just isolate all of the people with, like, beliefs that we don't like, disapprove of, or find toxic to society. Corral them into one space. Ignore them. Don't talk to them. Allow them to circulate amongst themselves. And see how that ends up with zero engagement from us. Just automatically ban them from every space that we operate in. It's a stupid idea. 
it's a stupid idea. I understand the necessity for like safe spaces and places that people don't want to deal with that sort of stuff. But there are people, most of the people who use that bot are literally running discussion spaces of some sort, right? They just don't want to hear like they're like, and you can end up on that list so easily. I've seen it. Degen rainbow glitter engraved chainsaws. And no, I'm not going to give you context for this. All right. Sounds right. No, I, I hate Posada bot. I hate it as a concept. I hate it as an execution. I hate the fucking name of it. Even as, oh, it's an ironic joke, bro. Great. Postmodernism with another win for society. Ah, yes. Enforcement of echo chambers. What could possibly go wrong, though? Um, no. C Cupcake, never. I will never let that fucking bot on my channel. Never. Um, somebody asked me something. There was, there was, somebody, somebody had something to ask and I, I missed it. Problem with Posada is the is its lack of gratitude. I can't do the voice, but there you go, nonsense. I have an original an original question about neo-Nazis, fascism, authoritarianism is something broke my mind. I thought all of them in the first uh, and the first, the foremost needed a strong leader, but apparently there are groups that don't organize this way. Is it just to evade the state or does it show my massive hole in theory? Yeah, they don't necessarily need a strong man. Uh, Walata. Um, I mean, oh, I'm just seeing his ban. Fucking Frizo, a difficult truth. I mean, catching a ban from Frizo, who gives a fuck? Um, but James, KF Logan, Riverboat, those are, I mean, you know, come on, man. Um, no, you don't necessarily need a charismatic leader for them to work. Um, though traditionally speaking, they work better, or at least they're better, easier to get the ball rolling with a charismatic leader. Um, but you don't necessarily need one. Um, yeah. Well, again, Joe's banned on Lost Sue. Catching a ban on Lost Sue is as easy as saying fuck the CCP. Um, and Lilith's Fane. <laughs> That's an easy one to get. Uh, um, NCC is not bad. Um, Ben's not t uh, terrible either. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and thanks for the follow there, Je Jesse. Um, oh. Uh. Aw, oh. why well, thank you. Uh, hola, como esta? Uh, me too, he went full tanky. Surrounded by and went full tanky. Yeah, dude surrounded by him. A lot of most of them devolve into that, but you can you can you can make it work. It's not um, 
Um, let's see, let's see. E2? Uh, I don't know, like months ago, me, uh, me Toad? Like months ago. Um, Joe recently got uh, banned from his channel for saying fuck, fuck the CCP. Straight up, caught a ban for it. Yeah. Um, and we have people in here right now who watched it go down. It, it yeah. You cannot criticize China. If you do, he will speak condescendingly to you and tell you that you're you, you, either you're white or young pup, you don't know anything. Shit like that. It's fucking, he went full tanky. Um, so, there you go. There's your answer. Is what it is. I mean, I think it's fucking hilarious. Um, explains why he was watching Chinese propaganda the one time I popped into. Oh yeah, it's fucking hilarious. He literally is standing for a group right now that is like has a record of exterminating indigenous communities. It's fucking hilarious. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Fucking, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna tolerate that the same fucking time. Talk about how colonizers exterminated and genocided your people. It's like, what do you fucking, what, what do you think that shit is? There's such a, there's such a mental disconnect going on there that like, yeah, like I, I just fucking, I literally just end up lecturing him every fucking time he'd come around here. There's no point in him being here. I'd lecture him nonstop. Winnie the Pooh emote when? <laughs> I mean, he does look like it. That's the, that's... Um... It looks like him. This this image is banned in China, by the way. This image is fucking banned. <clears throat> Jesse, I don't drink beer. I don't drink. Um, but I would happily smoke a joint with you. I'd, I'd smoke a vape pen with you. I'd fucking hang out. We could have some organic tea. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't drink. I feel like hiding my honey. Caboose, it's fucking ridiculous. It's the same picture, dot gif. I know, right? Dude, Caboose, it's like, he looks like Winnie the Pooh. Sorry. Oh no, China's taking down the stream. Uh, well, while we're at it then, just, just, just to make sure, just to be safe, just to be safe, everyone. Fuck the Chinese government there. All right. Just had to make sure. <clears throat> there you go, Buddhist. Um, I had some headlines I was going to talk about. Um, oh, oh, okay. So a bunch of you probably aren't Redditors, but for those of us that are Redditors and those that fucking blah, 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 blah. Um, late stage capitalism has basically gone full tanky and a late stage capitalism V2 has spun off of it because a user uh, made a pro China post. Somebody brought up the Uyghur genocide. 
the thread got nuked by the mods. That's a technical term on Reddit, nuking. It basically means um, a comment chain entirely gets deleted. You just nuke the talk comment and everything under it gets deleted. Um, the users start speaking out against the CCP. Anybody who spoke out against the C CCP got a perma ban. A secondary post gets made, another thread gets nuked, and now they've spun off an entirely new subreddit as a result, late stage capitalism v2. Um, yeah. Jesse, where the fuck do you live? Where the fuck do you live, Jesse? Your internet provider blocked porn. What 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 Muslim nation do you live in? This 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 feels this feels Islamic. It just it does. It just feels Islamic. Tahoe to be exact. No. How did your fucking what ISP, Jesse? What ISP? What ISP in Tahoe, California blocked porn? I need a name. Coming from IT, um, right wing nut owns the service provider. I, I don't. DM it to me. You know what? Fucking Jesse, if you don't want to say it in open chat, I, I want that's fine. But I want to look into this. If this is real, then I want to look into this, Jesse. I'm going to fucking send you a whisper on Twitch really quickly so you can whisper back. Um, I won't mention it on air, but like... There. I sent you a whisper. Square, where are you? I forget where you are. Yeah, I'm going to look into this. And yeah. Yeah. Um, mountain community I live in has its own ISP run by a single dude and he bans most non-Trump related... God, I need to run ISPs. Interesting. AT&T helped build OAN. That's not surprising, quite frankly. AT&T literally funded them. Holy shit. Um, I'm uh, Jesse. I'm waiting on that name because I'm gonna look into this. I'm gonna contact this motherfucker. I'm gonna ask for. I'm gonna ask for comments, like straight up. Poof, concept, Jesus Christ, caboose. I mean, if anybody wants to buy a chainsaw, I'll do that to it. Upward broadband in Pennsylvania. They, that's that's not actually at the ISP level, though, Buddhist. That is literally, we commit to our customers that we'll make a good faith effort to block content that's categorized by our filtering software to fit within two categories. Um... Is it their actual data stream or is it the, you know what, hang on, let me check, 
check other. See, this is this is what I want to know is whether it's their data stream or whether they give you software to do this. Because a lot of a lot of ISPs give you software to do this. <laughs> it's not a limitation. It's it looks like it may be at the uh, at the ISP level for them. Where do they exist? In and around Harrisburg. Interesting. Chester, Franklin, Fulton, Huntington, Mifflin, and Lan of course it's Lancaster. Of course it's Lancaster. And so you know, it's Lancaster, not Lancaster. It's Lancaster. Just so you know if you ever see the name. Um. Orby. Okay. All right. I mean, do these motherfuckers exist? <laughs> Tech support, right? Right? Orby is a router type, not... I don't even see them. Dude, they're not even coming up on most on any searches. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Kaiser. It's a fucking drop and a half. Yeah, no, Orby is a router type, Jesse. It's made by Netgear. That's why I'm like, that's, there is no, there, route, Orby is your router type. It's, it's a model of router made by Netgear, not your ISP. Um... Uh, Corey, I don't really have any thoughts on him. So, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, because I'd be curious. Um, I, too, have a family crest. Um... Yeah, Square. I mean, any VPN will bypass any filtration system that an ISP uses. Um, same goes for you, Jesse. Um, any use of a VPN bypasses the um, the ISP content filtration system unless they have VPNs filtered as well, in which case a whole host of work-from-home systems would fail to uh, operate at that point. Um, in which case you could use I2P, well, not really. There's not much porn internally on I2P. You could use Tor and or a VPN. Um, so either or of those would work. Um, yeah, you, you just bypass that. It's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. There we go. Clear that. All right. There we go. Oh, don't shop. Tech support. PIA. PIA. Private internet access. 
You can pay anonymously with cards, uh, with like cash cards. Bought it like uh, for cash at like Walmart or Walgreens or CVS. Um, and they're the only VPN to have ever been tested by the federal government in court by the FBI twice and to have come out the other side without having divulged any information because there is no information to divulge. They're the only one to have passed with flying colors so far. Everybody else is speculative at, at, at most beyond that. And PIA supports WireGuard. So, I'm telling you, private internet access, it's the only way to go. It's the only one that's been proven. It's the only one that's been proven. There you go, Weather. You can do your own reading. But basically, uh, basically it's just an open source uh, exchange protocol for encrypted networks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I'll stand for PIA any day of the week. Um, Anybody want to buy a chainsaw? <clears throat> it's going to be a huge markup on it. Limited edition. Except, no, 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 Tech, that's the opposite of proven. That is showing that there would have been data to fucking hand over. That's a huge concern, Tech Support. That's a giant fucking concern. That, like, rather than give up any info, they closed down and moved. If you are properly running that VPN, there's nothing for you to hand over. All that's there to hand over is maybe a fucking billable customer list, but no associated data sets whatsoever. You can fucking walk in the front door of the federal courthouse and be like, there's no data. There's nothing we can do. That is proven. If you have to shut your business and move because you're, in, you're concerned about having, being forced to turn things over, then you have things to turn over. That's an issue. That's a huge fucking red flag for a company tech support. From See, this, this is what I used to do tech support back in the old days, is penetration testing. That's a huge fucking red flag. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a giant fucking... Uh, that for me, that's, yeah, you should be able to walk through those front doors, undergo a complete forensic analysis and come out the other side going, yeah, there's nothing to, for us to, there's no evidence. There's nothing for us to look at. Nice. It's a sword. Nice. Six pairs. Um, it is a, what was it? Kuchir? Kukir? Kokir? C O O C H E E R? That's all I'm seeing on the side there. Hey, Ross, thanks for the sub. Like the boring flamethrower. Exactly. Um, yeah. Fucking flamethrower. Not a flamethrower. <laughs> Buy our flamethrower. Not a fl Hashtag not a flamethrower. Um, it's a torch. It's a torch. It's a big torch. But it's a torch. Um, yeah, you can go, you can go down to, um, you can go down to CVS, 
Walgreens, Walmart, whatever, get a gift card for Walmart or CVS or Walgreens, cash card. You can fucking go to a page on PIA's website, give them the number, and they will charge an account. They will create a pre a pre uh, a prepaid account for the VPN service. Then you can use a WireGuard uh, connected uh, app, phone, device, uh, phone, tablet, fucking um, tower, laptop, it doesn't fucking matter, to connect to their network, of which it has been shown twice now in federal court that there have, there's no logs. They have nothing to turn over. So not only are you not in the billing side, the billing system, you're not in the connection side, the VPN or the data network side. It's the only one to pull that. Everybody else is like, you know, oh, well, we're in X, Y, or Z. Well, you know what? Iceland will turn shit over too. Iceland will turn shit over. Switzerland will turn shit over. Oh, yeah. Just because your company is based in fucking Iceland doesn't mean shit. If, if they catch, if, they ca uh, if there is suspicion that there is illegal activity operating on their network, they are mandated by the state in Iceland too to turn over their records at legal request. If they have a fully legal, uh, legal and signed warrant, they are required under law to cooperate with it. It doesn't matter what country they're in. What matters is whether their system can withstand a forensic analysis or not. And none of these motherfuckers have undergone one. None of them have been hauled in front of a U.S. federal court yet to see if they come out the other side clean or not. That is my idea of fucking proof. Small sword. I have a chainsaw that won't run until I replace the spark plug. It's a Mac Pro 610. Um, main saw is a steel. Farm Boss 710. Uh, steels are good fucking chainsaws. They are. Um... Can't turn over what you don't have. Degen is the sword of the degenerate. Um, yeah, you can't turn over what you don't have. And that's the point with PIA, is they've shown already. They don't have anything. They don't have anything to turn over. It's just it's like, yeah, sure, whatever, come on in. Look at whatever the fuck you want to look at, but we don't have shit. So, yeah. Like I said, they're the only ones that have proven themselves so far. Everybody else is speculative. And the idea of protecting yourself by like, oh, they're in Switzerland or, oh, they're in Iceland. Mm, that's fine as long as you're talking about normal everyday. Um, why not do it as far as a streamer here? Why not do what, Corey? Um, um, that's fine as long as you're on the up and up. But if you're doing some sketchy shit. None of those data protections, none of those standard like Icelandic or Swiss or Euro uh, European data, personal data pr uh, privacy laws apply to you anymore. All that shit goes out the window the instant they have a warrant for illegal activities. That shit's done with. Right? Like it's not a fucking magic wand or something like, oh, all users, no matter what, are protected. It's if you are uh, abiding by the laws of the land. Um, you can buy a great knockoff of a steel on Amazon in the same factory in China for like half the price and uses the same replacement parts. They work great. Hmm, interesting. Duly noted. Tech support. Gold standard or nothing, bro. Gold standard or nothing. If it's the same fucking price, why not do the better one? Right? Why, 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 why? Oh, well, as long as you're doing privacy and piracy, well, why not do the one that'll protect you against anything? If it's the same fucking price, right? That's a stupid fucking argument. It is. It's like, oh, well, I have this one that'll do like two thirds of the job. Or I have this other one that'll do the whole damn job. Get the one that'll do the whole damn job. It's not like you're paying a premium for it.
Marcus, nice. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, Patronum, I've seen that before. Uh, where streamers like shill the crypto gambling shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. Um, I remember that was it the CSGO ones. I forget. I didn't watch any of that shit and see, I didn't play CSGO. Um, but I remember a couple of dudes got tagged for that shit, right? I forget what that was about. Like, I don't even know how you, um, what the deal with that is, but I remember like some CSGO mixer gambling bullshit or whatever it was. Um, and guys were like, you know, Oh, I'm not a part of it. Meanwhile, they're getting paid behind the scenes. Like this is just, you know, this is just my favorite site to use. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's nothing new. That's nothing new. That's, that's par for the course. Um, gambling site was part of the CSGO shit. The, the guy then created the new site. That makes sense. That, that figures. That figures. Um, Oh, all right. Oh, hang on. I'm getting, getting notifications here. I don't understand people sometimes. <sighs> they were advertising gambling sites where people put up skins with real value as collateral for their slot machines, and then they were fixing the odds so they always won on stream. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you for that explanation. Um, exactly, Lotta. Um... A friend of mine is showing crypto on Facebook. Apparently someone tried to hack my Facebook account recently and they sent me a recovery email. I haven't been able to log into Facebook for eight years. <laughs> eight years, forgot my password. Actually, I forgot my phone number. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so um, Brazil passed a law. Um, oh, let's just hang on while we're at it. Uh, Brazil passed a law to provide free tampons and pads for disadvantaged uh, women in Brazil. Um, Bolsonaro blocked the bill. He vetoed it. Apparently, according to the campaign, uh, according to the like one of the spokespeople for the campaign, um, one out of four girls in uh, in Brazil are kept out of school because of what they call period poverty. Basically, they miss days. They miss a huge portion of school because of their period. Um, and they don't have the products necessary to make it tolerable to be in school at that time. So they just miss out on school. So one in, f one in four in um in brazil undergo period poverty so they managed to pass a bill to provide free tampons and pads for anybody who is of uh, financially disadvantaged status and bolsonaro comes along he's like veto yeah cruelty it's it's be the point is the cruelty cruelty is the point kids cruelty is the point Uh, let's see if I have a quote by him. Uh, yes, Caboose. He says, the project is against public interest. That's his reasoning. That's that's it, Caboose. Hey, there you go. There you go. So... Uh, yes, Corey, it was. I was Gur. I 
So my parents had pulled me out during my first period. They sent me, even though we couldn't afford pads or anything, I literally bled through my pants every day, every single day, very first period, uh, like down to my ankles. Jesus, Sippy. Oof. I'm sorry you had to experience that, Sippy. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's a thing. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, basically, well, uh, basically, maximum bullshit. Um, I'm going to show this video. I have critiques. I have critiques, um, but I'm going to show this video nonetheless. Um, Technically, I didn't. I got radicalized into the far right on TikTok. Well, technically, I didn't, but an account that I made did. And this is a graph of what that looked like. I just co-published the study, and I'll link it in the comments. But I'll Okay. <clears throat> First critique. I just co-published this study. She's setting up an artificial expectation that she is a social scientist who has engaged in formalized research and then published it for peer review in, a, in some sort of journal of publication, right? No. She works for Media Matters. And the study is research. By all technical definitions, it is research. But it is not a formalized study. It is an article that has been published to Media Matters. Now, journalists are trained in research techniques and methodologies. They do engage in research. I am not denigrating their process or what they did, but I do take exception with the framing that she does here. She sets up an expectation that doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. So, also break it down right now here. So we wanted to examine whether Thanks, or not transphobia is a gateway prejudice that leads to like broader far right radicalization. It's been pretty clear for a while now that the far right is transphobic, but we wanted to see whether being transphobic alone was enough to lead you to the far right. So I made a brand new TikTok account and followed 14 creators known to post transphobic content. Then I started scrolling my for you page where I. If you have questions about this, the Media Matters article is posted on the shared content on the Discord server, and they do go to the extent of defining all of these terms. When she says things like, you know, 14, um, uh, 14 uh, content producers that are known to create uh, like transphobic content, they define and qu qualify how they metric that term. So, like, she isn't just, like, randomly saying, oh, they're transphobic and moving on. There is formalized qualifications for this in that, uh, in that piece. Like I said, if this is, as I said when I posted it to the shared content, I take exception with how this is framed. But as far as their peers, as far as journalistic peers go, this is well and above what most of their peers do. Um, as far as research, investigation, um, like documentation goes, they're doing good work. This, this, was, this was solid. Exclusively engaged with transphobic content, and I documented the major narratives of the more than 400 videos recommended to me. We also double blind coded this, meaning that another researcher also watched every video and coded the narratives. And then if we ever disagreed, <clears throat> two more researchers would come in and perform a tiebreaker. Once we removed sponsored videos and videos that had been taken down before they could be double coded, we were left with 360 videos. Of the 360 total videos, 103 were homophobic or anti-trans, 42 were misogynistic, 29 contained racist narratives or white supremacist messaging, and 14 endorsed violence. Obviously, TikTok didn't just like give us neo-Nazi content immediately. I actually didn't get my first Nazi symbol until video 141. But the more I interacted with transphobic content, the more I was fed not only more transphobic content, but also homophobia and misogyny and racism and anti-Semitism. So I didn't actually have to interact with racist content to be fed white supremacist content. 
I just had to engage with transphobic content. What you see in this graph is the TikTok algorithm starting off with a normal feed, you know, memes, recipe videos, whatever, and then going, oh, you're transphobic. Have you tried hating the gays? What about women? So it appears that transphobia alone can radicalize a TikTok user. Around video 400, you'll notice an interesting spike in far-right figures, hate symbols, anti-Semitism, and calls to violence. That's when I reached fascist TikTok and set my phone on fire. 400 videos might sound like a lot, but if a user watches each video for an average of 20 seconds, they would end up watching 400 videos in just over two hours. So a user could feasibly download the app at breakfast and be fed the overtly white supremacist neo-Nazi content before lunch. That's not good. Okay. A couple of things we're going to talk about. <clears throat> One, uh, Rev, I'll address what you said. Um, you mean the algorithm suggested videos related to the content you intentionally consume? No way. Well, okay. So that's kind of the point. Without intentional filtration or stopgap measures put in place for an algorithm, it will build that web. Now, what she was setting out to prove was that all of these are correlatable. Um, if you, if you, um, if you start with transphobia, can you end up with the anti-Semitism, with fascism, with all of these sorts of things, Call, uh, explicit calls to violence, these sorts of things. And yes, yes. If you, if you just start with exclusively alone, just, you know, I don't think like, I don't think men should be competing in women's sports that level. Just let that level in two hours, you can end up with the Jews run the world and whites are being replaced and we should take tiki torches to the street and kill these fucking and these fucking queers. That's what the algorithm does. Um, and so and nobody, nobody who's a computer scientist, nobody who understands, uh, uh, you know, programming, nobody who understands these sort of like machine learning processes is surprised by this. This is not this is this isn't surprising, um, but it was to set out the last time somebody did this was to show that the YouTube algorithm did this and then the Facebook algorithm did this. And it's usually to just instigate um, programmatic changes at the corporate level. This is usually a, a prodding of the corporation to be like, hey, you need to fucking censor that shit. That's usually the end goal of these sorts of campaigns. Um, but yeah, yeah. And, and it goes to show that yes, whether transphobia is pretty unified within the right. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a fascist, if you're a white supremacist, if you're a neo-Nazi, if you're a general authoritarian, if you're fucking Ben Shapiro level, if you're fucking, it doesn't really matter. There, uh, the transphobia does seem to unite them all. And you can show that using the algorithm by just starting with transphobia and ending up with Jews run the world. They're out to replace the white race. So, you know, worth looking at. Oh yeah, Facebook doesn't give a fuck. Facebook doesn't give a fuck. It, no, it's no, Facebook actively is the other direction. It's not that Facebook doesn't give a fuck. It's that Facebook gives a fuck just in the other direction. Right? Like Facebook is like, "Uh, that's our profits you're fucking with." Stop it. <laughs> Knock that the fuck off. Um India and Pakistan entirely banned TikTok. It's worth doing. It's worth doing getting rid of that shit. Um, going back to the idea that you don't want to pass a Posada bot. Yeah, it, it's, it's <sighs> that entire fucking idea. That entire fucking idea. I, whatever, whatever. I would much rather, like I've talked about this before. I see. I wouldn't have social media regulation either. I'd have an internet that is, um, that is blind 
is completely anonymous and encrypted end to end. Okay, that's how I would design the internet. But here's the thing. I'd also educate the fucking populace and not intentionally dumb them down to be fucking lukewarm button pushers for a corporatocracy. So if you have unregulated communication means and you have an intentionally dumbed down populace who has been fed propaganda and hate speech their entire life, you're going to get some interesting outcomes. Yeah, you can get some interesting outcomes out of that. I2P every day, tech, I2P every day. But we're not ready for it. Rev, no, no, TikTok's 100% Chinese spyware. It's 100% Chinese spyware. Like, not even close. Like, it's just, it's Chinese spyware. Yeah. How dare you? Um, hey, Craig, uh, if I, how dare you? If I don't have a discrete yet anonymized identity on the internet, how can I carry my clout from community to community? Yes, the same way that those of us on Reddit uh, rack up large points on like huge karma scores on accounts and then burn the account every couple of years. Right? It's like, I've been on Reddit for ages. Do I have my original account? No. Why would you? burn that shit you don't want that profile following you <laughs> uh, so the idea is to keep suggesting programming random rather than funnel into specific subcultures I mean in some sense it just depends how you want to go about it you could put hard limits on certain things that like you sort of like decouple them um and isolate the communities in reddit it's called a quarantine um so you can't link directly to a community uh, like you immediately engage a fucking quarantine page that you have to click through and accept and that sort of stuff um that gives you the heads up that like hey this community is considered toxic as fuck um and so you could put like those sorts of like decoupling measures in between some of those uh links between ideas or um um, correlatable um, elements or you can go full-blown censorship um, at the end of the day though it's gonna find a home um, there's no th the way to combat it isn't to say no you can't say that the way to combat that is to actually have a conversation is to get them experience Right? Like most of the people who are, we know this process, right? Dick Cheney and fuck, uh, Dick Cheney was completely homophobic and then his fucking daughter comes out as a lesbian and all of a sudden they're just on a dime, right? It's like that. People need exposed to people that they care about, friends, family, that are in these marginalized communities. White people who are racist towards black people need to know a black person, right? If they're transphobic, they need to know a trans person, somebody that they respect, somebody they love, somebody they care for, somebody that is valuable to them in their life, right, is going to be the one to break down those barriers. It's going to be the one to to open those uh, those and to make those inroads. That's how that works. It's how it's always worked. Um. So. Cheney's sister still threw under the bus? I mean, hey. Um, uh, Crygo, I have no idea what you're talking about. Bunch of my friends coming out as trans. Switch my transphobia around real quick. Yep, caboose. Just like that. All right? It's pretty simple. It's pretty fucking simple. <laughs> Kaiser, are, your, are, are those uncles... Are they Korean? Because that's hilarious if they are. Um, skeptic. Um, I 
Marcus, please do not introduce me to your racist white people. I have a full schedule for the foreseeable future. <laughs> um, nah, they're from the Montana white side. All right, Kaiser. I'm like, that's that'd be amazing if it's like, fuck it. Oh, yeah, all my, my favorite uncles all hate Asian people. It's like, are they the Korean ones? Yeah. <laughs> That would that would track actually. That would track. That would make sense. I mean, it's a moot point at this point, skeptic. The Keystone XL pipeline would have made sense before the U.S. Uh, refineries transitioned over to uh, natural gas processing. With the location that the Keystone XL pipeline is running to um, doesn't handle that kind of low-grade crude and tar sand, uh, tar sand material anymore. They already transitioned the facilities. The Keystone pipe XL pipeline is literally a moot conversation point. It doesn't matter. Like, it literally doesn't matter at this point. You could build that fucking pipeline and the refineries that it was designed to go to would be like, yeah, we don't process that shit anymore. We transit, we, we converted our facilities. <laughs> like, they, they, they'd have to spend, like, tens and hundreds of millions of dollars to recon back convert their facility. The Keystone Pipeline does not make sense anymore, just from a pure technological point of view. Fuck all the rest of it. So it's a moot discussion. So there you go. Same trans friends, trans friends, uh, trans friends switch by ambient transphobia, trans ignorance real quick. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, that's just how that shit works. It's how it always works, right? Like you don't know shit about shit and you're like, I don't know. I have preconceptions because my fucking mom and dad used to talk shit about them. And you're like, but. Dude, you know, you fucking grow up in the deep south and you're like, oh, fucking, you know, black people this, black people that. And you go to school and you meet a bunch of uh, fucking really cool black people. And you come home, you're fucking, you hear your dad fucking yelling about the N-words ruining society. And you're like, yeah, that doesn't sound like John. You know, fucking Willie's fucking amazing. Like, dude, we were hanging out all day and he's one of the greatest kids I know. I, I mean, fr I'm friends with him. None of that makes sense in my head now. Apparently, de mom and dad are full of shit. Right? Like, that's that's just how that shit gets fixed. You need, need exposed to these people. So why don't they explain it like you just did to the masses? Oh, crusty, because division is control. You know it as well as I do, crusty. You've been around a lot longer than I have, man. You know it. You know it is better than most of us. Division is control. <laughs> Lord Berkusat, thanks for the follow. Uh, I had an awkward encounter with a trans person a decade ago. I realized it hadn't to do with their being trans, but my uncomfortability with the facial plastic surgery they had had. Hmm, interesting uh, turd. Uh, mom and dad are chuds. Exactly, right? Like, luckily, like, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't exposed. I've told this story, like, I don't know, maybe once or twice before. Um, I didn't know black people existed. I'm not shitting you. I didn't know black people existed. Uh, I grew up on a mountaintop in a small village in Vermont. Do you think I, do you think there were any black people in my town, in my village? Mm -mm. Not a fucking one. Do you think they taught us about them? Mm -mm. Not a fucking one. We hadn't even covered the civil war yet by that point. Right. I moved to the deep South. I moved to fucking Tennessee. All right. I moved to Tennessee. Good old Tennessee. Fucking art. Wait, this in this area? Mm, and a lot of black folk up in this area. All right. So, literal culture shock. Literal culture shock. Um, I know what it feels like. Like, I know what that feels like. Um, and I, I had having no position, I had no reference point for black people. None. Having no reference point. This is what my little mind came up with. They must be really like suntanned, sunburned people. That was all I was. That was my logical conclusion was like, well, I know like we get darker in shit when we're out in the sun. So clearly that's just somebody who's had a lot of sun or something. That's what I came up with. That was my hypo. That was my working hypothesis. Keep in mind, fifth grade. 
music TV and turd. I was, dude, I was a feral child. Glazy, you want to bet? You have no idea exactly how isolated you can get on a mountaintop. I had a uh, culture shock like that when I moved to uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Uh, makes me grateful for that. I uh, grew up in Arizona, California. Very diverse. Look, dude, I'm from Alberta. It might be moot and anachronistic, but it's literally talked about that there's like uh, souls depend on it. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Skeptic. Good luck with that. Um, what on earth is the local economy up there? Um, cows. So I bought cows. Cows. That's that's the, the that's the local economy. Cows, uh, cheese, cows, um, and maple syrup. Oh, redacted. I'm sorry about that. Uh, sassy. I grew up homeschooled with mixed siblings and was never taught about racism. I fucking shit myself when I finally entered public schools. Uh, did somebody wait? I saw something go by about that. Oh, okay, ISP. I want to move on top of a mountain and only care about cheese and maple syrup. What the hell? It's possible. Sure, you weren't in Quebec. I was twenty minutes from the uh, from the Canadian border. Ride. We visited. Uh, we visited Quebec. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's astounding how isolated people have no fucking clue how isolated you can get in this country. You can. And especially if your parents like really want to isolate you, if your parents go that full homeschool route and cut off like internet and TV and shit and go like kind of Amish mode a little bit, you'd be astounded how isolated you can get in this country, especially in like the North woods of Maine and the mountains of Vermont and Montana and fucking like up in the haulers down in the deep South up some of those, um, up some of those waterways in Louisiana, right? Like you people have, people have no clue. If you grew up in like a metropolitan area, you have no idea apparently exactly how rural this country can get. You can get very isolated in this country. I didn't even grow up on a mountaintop at all. I knew we were, uh, were glow-in-the-dark white Roman Catholics. But 15 minutes pedaling with a bike would show me a new world. Just didn't. This was a lot of... Uh, bike. I grew up in Detroit in the eighties and, and in my school, we sang all <laughs> Negro hymns. Fair enough. I don't know. The, okay. I've been on a temporary jobs and not the ones that will last long or permanent time. 50 permanent jobs. for kids. Fucking, Yeah. I mean, skeptic it's again. I mean, uh, people often forget how fucking huge this country is. People do. Yeah. Yeah. Beast. I remember the movie, the village. Um, Interesting, Marcus. Uh, yep, they are caboose. <laughs> Tech support. That's that's the trade-off. Getting that physical isolation with the high-speed internet is a huge deal. You you got to pay out the nose for that. Um, John Henry's hammer. I was one of the one of five white kids. Nice. Um. Uh, do people in the mountains go hiking um, or is that just a chore? No, no, no. We grow up hiking. We grow up skiing and hiking and climbing and all of that sort of stuff. No, that's 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 pastime. That's pastime. Yeah, 100%. We, we, I, um, 
Krusty, and that's why most of the country is blind to a lot of the things going on. Yeah, no, I, Krusty, people... Krusty, where are you from again? Krusty, where'd you grow up and where are you from? You can anonymize it, expand it. You don't have to tell me. But I got the feeling like you're, you're old timer, so you, you've you seen some shit in your day. Um, But no, no, that's, 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 I grew up basically feral. Um, I was literally running. We owned a mountain. Like I've talked about this before. Bougie as shit. We owned a mountain. 100%. <laughs> I grew up on a mountain. We owned it. Not a hill. A fucking mountain. Um, and, like, I mean, I was allowed to just run wild and free. Clothes free, climbing, getting filthy, fucking, cl like, climbing trees and rocks and exploring all over our property. Acres and acres and acres. I was basically a feral child for all intents and purposes. Yeah. Um... South Bronx live upstate New York. All right, then you, all right, so you, you've seen the opposite of that. So you grew up like in the cultural cauldron and then moved up into bumfuck nowhere because people have no idea upstate New York is bumfuck nowhere. Upstate New York is fucking rural as shit, man. Fucking people are like, oh, New York, huh? Upstate New York. Big difference. Um, so yeah, you've seen it in reverse. Yeah, you, 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 Krusty seen that shit up close that, like, wow, y'all really don't know anything, do you? <laughs> um, Rev, and that's why I connected with Probably Radical. Um, if I go without hiking for too long, I'll literally die. About 70 miles, uh, 75 from the city. Yep. Cassie, I grew up completely feral. Upstate New York. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> it is tech support. It is. I, I am I am in I am forever eternally grateful for the childhood I had. Um I would trade all of this. All of this to have never left Vermont. I'd trade everything. To just live in that blissful ignorance. Plain and simple. You have no idea. It's, there's no, there aren't words to describe it. There's no way I can describe it to you. I, I, you can, you can, you can begin to conceptualize, but <sighs> ponds, a river, greenhouse, acres and acres of farm and garden, Surrounded on all sides by near impenetrable forest. A close-knit community that watches out for each other and makes sure outsiders don't fuck with you. It's pretty close to heaven. Let's just put it that way. It's pretty close to heaven. I'd love to just get a little intersectionality in it. some sense probably more than you'd expect yeah i'd give anything to go back to being a hippie kid feeding the entire campground yeah people who have experienced it as as, as their childhood um it's like being evicted it's like being for, evicted from the garden of eden it is that's the only comparison that i can make um, that's the only comparison I can make for you is imagine growing up in Eden and then God comes along and says, get out. That's, that's it. <sighs> Capitalistic, um, forces engage my parents, engage my mother. We end up moving and I'm evicted from Eden. Um, I'd practically kill to live that way and have a strong internet connection. Um, in my honest op uh, opinion, I was forced into capitalism. Yep. Rev hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I was forced into that situation. I could have had, I could have a legacy. That property could be still mine. I mean, we still have right of first refusal. So anytime they sell it, they have to contact us and 
ask if we want to buy it. Um, but that, that property could be mine. Like I could inherit that property. I could inherit that mountain. Right? Like imagine me sitting here being able to tell you guys as a community that like, oh yes, I own a mountain. We have multiple water sources. We have tons of organic farm, greenhouse, all of this stuff already on property. Who wants to come try something? Right? We'd be situated perfectly to try it. It was stolen from me. Um, yeah. I, I miss that property eternally. Ah. Oh. Mountain back. Mountain back. Hashtag mountain back. Oh, some sense. Who knows what that property costs now? That property is going to... If it goes up for the market now, I don't know what that property would cost. I don't know in what state that property is. I don't know if they've... I don't know if the house has been taken care of. I don't know what the condition of the... the like, that, that thing could be absolutely devastated by now or it could cost three quarters of a million dollars a million dollars I don't fucking know but yeah um I'd drop everything to show up if that's what was offered it, it's trust me if I could crowdsource that money and fucking make it happen it was a good time it's a good time it's difficult to get in and out of during winter I'll tell you that right now. Transiting that driveway in the dead of winter was um, it was a thing. It was a thing. Um, but God, it was a gorgeous piece of property. Um, when you looked out over the the land, the estate, um. Crowdsource, you can't just subtweet Swede like that. Um, when you looked out the like front of the house, right? All you saw was mountains and trees. No roads, no lights, no nothing. You just saw wilderness, mountains and trees. That's what you saw. Not, not off, no, not, I, I don't have any digitized and I, I'm not going to show you the property because that's just doxing myself. Um, I can though, let me see, let me just, out of curiosity. There we go. That feels, yep. Okay, so I'm literally zooming in the map and I'm like looking around and I'm like, this road feels right. It's the right road. I'm like, this this feels right. Like I'm driving up it again. I could I could just feel it. Um Found it. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. There we go. Um, <laughs> there's my rock giant boulder on the property. I claimed it as my own. Oh, 
It looks like the pool is in very bad shape. This area doesn't warrant high resolution scanning very much. So like the, the pictures are kind of shit. Um, looks like the greenhouse is still there, but the amount of gardens has been cut down probably like by nine tenths. Doesn't look like there's any of that being maintained. Um, let me go down to the second pond. Road doesn't look very well maintained either, quite frankly. Mm. House is still there, though. It's a bad fucking image, but it looks like, dude, it looks like they have, may not have even painted it. Um, Jesus, pools, greenhouse, large gardens, you were bougie. Like I said, um, train gardens for lawn. Yeah. Tech support. Yeah. Um, it looks like it, Cassidy. It looks like somebody's still living there. There was, there was a vehicle parked out back. Um, Looks like somebody put some windmills up in the community, too. Um, deep shade perennials and shrubs. So if we leave here, the gardens might be stable. Yeah. Um, ah, no worries, Corey. Stardew Valley, that bitch. Um. I'm sure there's a ton of land for, upgra uh, for grabs in Montana, <laughs> but it's Montana. It's Montana. That's the issue. Like Vermont is Vermont. There's tons of fucking anarchists and oh yeah, this has got hippie written all over it. Fucking interesting, bro. Um, most of my yard is just woods. I yeah. Oh, Zippy posting. Oh, I see it. Nice. Nice, Zippy. Tons of cheap land in Oregon again. Well, I mean, you know. That, that's at least. Let's see. Land watch. Oh, that would be... <laughs> See, all right, so here, here, all right, kids, fucking, right? You've got Hassan money, right? For a second, just think you've got Hassan money. This is three quarters of a million dollars. It is um, 78, uh, 78 acres for all intents and purposes, all right? It has an ag building, by the way. Agriculture. It's a okay. Three quarters of a million dollars. For another quarter of a million dollars, you could probably run fiber from anywhere. Where where are you going to need to bring your internet in from? Right. You can bring fiber into that into that property. 
million dollars. You've still got two and a half million dollars that you haven't spent. Because he spent like what? Three and a half? Three, something like that? Right? Fuck him. Right? Get, bougie recognizes bougie. He's addicted to the lifestyle. He's addicted to the lifestyle. He needed his fucking Starbucks on the corner. He needed an amphitheater around the way. He needed to be able to drive 45 minutes to see a Cirque du Soleil show. He needed that shit. That's, he's addicted to the lifestyle. That's it. Public, 78 acres. You could build them an entire fucking house. Job done. Oh, they moved in afterwards. Is from what I understand. They moved in afterwards. Fuck, for 70... Okay. Buy them a house. Buy them a house. Oh, public, I already talked about running fiber. For for seventy uh, for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you can have seventy eight acres in an entire compound. For two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you can fucking run fiber in for probably from pretty much anywhere. You can have dedicated fiber loop for yourself, and you're still down two two point five million. Fine, buy your fo buy your folks a fucking condo or a house in whatever place they want, the closest city, so they can pick up residents, and then you can actually start. Talking, uh, you can start walking the walk. He needed his Starbucks. That's it. <clears throat> uh, Marcus, no. I'm with. I'm. I'm actually unironically with Kvass on that one. I am. Cities are shit. Why create a utopia for anarchists when you can sell a fantasy to kids? Um, whole car-based society demolished local communities. Um, yeah, the cities are designed f crap. They're crap. The cities are crap. U.S. cities, at least. Like, if you want to come to me and talk to me about, like, Hamburg or Okinawa, Osaka, right? Even London. Right, which is ridiculous. But even London, um, they're set up wrong. They're not for the public. They're literally designed around, US cities are designed around the car. They're designed around the commercial space. They're not designed around the people. You literally have to redesign US cities to make them functional again. Until then, you can come up against the same issues, the same gentrifications, the same overpriced real estate markets, the same coercive elements, the same environmental elements over and over and over. You're going to fucking keep butting your head into a, wa a fucking wall. Nashville did a pretty decent job of revamping their, um, their walking infrastructure. They, they turned a, like an old uh, freeway loop into like a bike and walking path. Um, Nashville did a halfway decent job. Like they're, they're actually um, a decent one to point out. Depends whose city. Um, Chicago's actually halfway decent. Chicago's actually halfway decent. But then you get into the like, how do you define cities? Is Boise 
gonna is does 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 Boise pop into your head because Boise's like uh, fifth amongst the hundred largest metropolitan cities with lowest carbon emissions per capita. So you ready to move to Boise? Right? Yes, yes, yes. Baloney, yes. The cut. Um, and like Mel Moreland City, Australia, Calgary, Calgary's fucking in there. Um, Freiburg. Yeah, I, I know Epcot doesn't count. Um, yeah, Zippy, I, I already talked about it. I mentioned it. I didn't show it on stream, but I, I mentioned it. Or is there something else I'm missing? Oh. How, how much, where is it? Zippy, send me details about that. How much, where, um, how much work does it need? Like, where is it located? What state? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Personally, I like Edinburgh's method. Uh, fuck you, it's cobblestone. Try to drive on that. Yeah, they say Tulsa's great. Um, oh, God. Um, uh, I looked at New Mexico. I looked at New Mexico, actually. Um, I legitimately looked at New Mexico. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. Okay, they still produce a shit ton more. And here's public, here's the thing. I can I can create a green compound in the middle of nowhere with a lower footprint than you in the city. I can do it. I already know I can. Multiple members in this community run them. Right? Like Cassidy's fucking footprint is low as shit. Makes makes her own food, grows her own animals, shit like that. It's just because fu uh, fucking people aren't doing it. Right? But you will never reduce the, that overall. Uh, you may get your per capita down, but coagulate 5 million people into a place. Shit's going to get messy. So the argument's moot at the end of the day. Like, I can create a lower carbon footprint. Like, and I can, I can create a lower carbon footprint in the rural areas than I can in the city. Having that land means I can do it. So, yeah. And you can build a fucking, you can build a society. You can actually build a community. You can enhance and create to an extent that you can't do in the cities. You just can't. They're too restrictive. There's too many building codes. There's too many enforcement methodologies. There's too many fucking police. What am I stepping on down there? <laughs> Geyser. Oh god, somebody just unironically said freedom isn't free. It's it, it's easier to do in the rural ruralities public. It is. It's easier. It can be done both ways, but you know what? It's a lot fucking easier. Like orders of magnitude easier to do in a rural location. 100%. Tell you what, you're you're in um 
you're in the Los Angeles Valley, right? Like you're in California, somewhere in the Los Angeles Valley. How's your planning commission look? What's your planning commission look like? You ever put in, uh, put a plan up before the planning commission? Like that's like that. That's okay. So where are you in Cali? I grew up in a place without police. It was peaceful. Yeah. We didn't have cops. Um, yeah. Like you ever tried, tried to ever tried to get a zoning designation changed? Right? Like, like that's, that's the thing you ever tried. You ever actually tried to do any of this? Because most of us, like a whole bunch of us in here have actually tried to do this in cities. Right, you ever tried to get a zoning designation changed? You ever tried to degentrify an area? You ever tried to do any of this shit that you're talking about? Oh, yeah, sure, it's theoretically possible. It's next to impossible to do. Look at San Francisco. Try and build low-cost residential housing in San Francisco. Try and do it. There's a reason video about uh, this dude who's been trying to do it for like five, seven years now. Can't get it done. Sure, you can theoretically do it. You can theoretically sprout wings and fly to the moon, but it's probably not happening anytime soon. Right? Like, fucking that poor woman in Florida who got hauled before the fucking, uh, before the city because she dared, dared, dared to not have just lawn in her front yard. She dared put wildflowers and things that would encourage the local fauna to proliferate. Code violation. Cited, cited, cited. Court, court, court. Appeals, appeals, appeals. Took her two and a half years to be able to and. God knows how many tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, in attorney's fees to be able to plant flowers in her front yard. It wasn't an HOA, Glazy. It wasn't even an HOA. It was a municipal ordinance. Yeah, it wasn't even a fucking HOA. It was a municipal ordin ordinance. Hey, Tidley. Uh-huh. Yeah, Glazy. If I'm not allowed to replace my alternator in my yard, fuck you. No, I'm talking about them both, public. I'm talking about the entirety of a metropolitan area. And the example of, of low-cost residential housing is in literally downtown fucking San Francisco. It is the definition of urbanity. Um, the Florida edition is, I suppose, what you would consider suburbs, so it's not even technically suburbs. Zoning and code enforcement and local municipality ordinance enforcement is a fucking bane on human existence. It is. And it's a nightmare to challenge it. It's a nightmare to change it. It's absolutely ridiculous. And a lot of times, you just end up bashing your head into the wall and nothing changes in the end. I, don't, I remember that one story about the, um, the dude in somewhere in the deep south who ended up just demolishing his house. He's like, fuck it, I'll tear the entire house down then. I'm done. Just out of spite. He's like, fuck it. Because code, uh, because of zoning and planning violations... It was going to be condemned anyway. He's like, I'll fucking tear the whole thing down. Who cares? Fuck you. I'm out. Right? All right. And in rural locations, done. No, burn, no big deal. Go build the thing. Just go build the thing. All right. Late. I got shit for having a strawberry patch on my front lawn before they changed the law over here. Yeah. That's human existence, public. 
everything we do is both good and bad. I'm, I'm more concerned about what can I do in this lifetime and what's going to cost me two years of my life arguing with a zoning board so I can put up a fucking fence post. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not seeking approval for my, for my garden. That's not a thing that's going to happen. So you show me a location where that's a, that's an actual problem. I'll show you a place I don't want to be. I know market gardeners who have fought to grow gardens in their side and front yards. Yeah, Cassie, it, it's a thing. It's a thing. And the, the the way you get that kind of thing is urbanity. You get the suburbs and the urban development centers, and you get zoning and code enforcement. And once you're down that road, dude, it's next to impossible to change anything. It's fucking next to impossible. That's why we moved outside city limits. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can't be inside, you can't be inside city limits to do that sort of shit. There's too many restrictions and the changes that people like uh, fucking oh well what about your per capita carbon footprint well the things that you're going to do to actually decrease that per capita carbon carbon footprint uh, footprint to a significant extent aren't gonna they're all gonna violate code enforcement in in cities try raising chickens try raising chickens just go for it try and keep a hog Try uh, try using your front yard to um, uh, start a food garden. Hmm? See what happens. Wait for it. Just wait for it. You'll, you'll be surprised when you get the $1,000 ticket from code enforcement. And in order to tear it up. I lived in an apartment complex once and I was legally barred from replacing an O2 sensor. Um, we can target practice on our property, raise any animals we want, and do pretty much anything we want. Yeah, exactly, Cassidy. You got to get outside city limits for that sort of shit, though. If you ever have too much free time, this fact pattern of a lawyer swinging fighter in HOA was literally my property law final. Uh, Jones Ranch Homeowners Association versus Degnan. Court of Appeals, California, First Appellate District, Division 4. Um, it's my mental health support chicken, though. Here in Arkansas, I'm legally allowed to carry a goddamn broadsword. Um... All right, I'm not going to read all of this. What was the outcome, uh, Marcus? Who won? Turd. Nice. Oh, God. Do I have an, do we have an idiot? Um, basically lawyer had to stop having loud swinging, uh, swinger parties at night. Sad day for humanity. Fuck. Boo. He's, I don't think he's, um, I don't, Glazy. This place is a fucking blight on the face of the earth. Um, 
I don't, I, well, okay, one, he doesn't consider himself an anarchist. He, um, You're only a capitalism if you own capital. Brilliant. Um, oh, he says things like, yikes, CRT, by the way. I tried feeding homeless people, but they just got mad at me. He's an unironic statist, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Population 130. Love it. Oh, what's that? What's that? All right, there we go. All right, anyway. Um, all right, so we talked about Bolsonaro. We talked about the far right pipeline. Uh, we talked about uh, LSC. Um, oh, so far, apparently this administration, um, he uh, the, so far in this administration, they've only been able to reunite 52 of at least 1,000 separated migrant families. Um, basically, <laughs> Trump's administration made it impossible to reunite them. Um, no one kept track of the children's family members uh, when they separated them. So they would take the child, which again, yes, Obama did this too. Um, but Trump did it to a degree in a speed and an amount that sort of dwarfed Obama. Um, they would separate the child from the family and like whatever family members, they'd kick the fucking family members. Um, and then they wouldn't document this. They have no way of finding who these children belong to. So it's near impossible to reunite these families. Yeah. 52 out of a, over a thousand. Um, But we saw this coming already. Like the, when it was, when the practice was being done, we knew what was up. Um, by the way, we don't even know how many were separated. We don't have that number either. It's estimated somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred. Hey, Solace. We we legitimately. This is this is the direct quote from the head of the family unif uh, reunification task force. Right. We estimate that it's over one thousand, somewhere between one thousand and fifteen hundred. Maybe more remain separated. It's hard to know because there's no record. How was your, uh, how was your stream, Solace? What'd you guys get up to? So it, it is, she, she literally described it, Michelle Bain, uh, or Benet, um, probably there's an apostrophe there. Um, she literally described it as a case by case detective work. Every single child that they try and reunify with their family that we, we stole they have to individually treat that. There is no like, oh, okay, fucking go into the case file. And it's 
do you remember your parents' names? Do you know where you are originally from? And then they have to investigate whether those people by those names are in that place and whether they can be contacted. If they, Given that they were a migrant family to start with, chances are the original location they started from, they have not made their way back to either. And so then it is a matter of trying to track them down through a process of migration through countries that don't necessarily keep records of these sorts of things. Oh, tech support. They literally were writing it on a whiteboard at one point, according to individual reports um, from people who handled some of this case. There is no data. There's, 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 it's, it has been described literally as chaotic or non-existent record keeping by the Trump administration. There, there, the data just doesn't exist. They just didn't put it in. Yes. And at one point, yes, they were keeping data on a whiteboard. Welcome, welcome to how it, how it actually went down. And this is, again, this is per Michelle Brain or Brene, um, I don't know how we say her last name, who is the head of the Family Reunification, Reunification Task Force, who has stated unequivocally that the chaotic or non-existent record keeping by the Trump administration essentially makes this task impossible. Yeah. To the point of, we don't know how many there are. We don't even know how many kids we took. All right? You think like, oh, there's a pile of children over here. Let's fuck, like, we don't know how many children we separated. We don't know where in the system they are. We don't know who they've been distributed to necessarily. We don't know if they're in CPS's hands or foster parents' hands or adoptive parents' hands or way, way worse. All right, Variable. Take care of yourself. Right? Like, that's, that's, that's the degree and level we're working with. Is, they just don't know. Oh, yeah, for sure, Cupcake. Yeah, for sure. Up. You're sick. My sick what? Do you mean you are sick? You're sick. Uh, again, tech support. You remember the last administration? It wasn't run. It wasn't Obama. Do you remember who was running that one? Do you remember that shit show? Yeah. Stop thinking about the Obama administration in an LDAP uh, database. Lightweight directory access protocol. Um, right? It was Trump who hated fucking brown people. And he put a whole bunch of people who hated brown people in positions of power. Right? Like that's, yeah, that's what we're dealing with is the fallout from that. So... Um, if you want, there's even a 2019 report by the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General describing the administration's methods of record separations as ad hoc, just saying that officials and IT systems were not equipped for the task at hand. This is per the DHS Inspector General tech support. Right. Um, in uh, June of 2021, um, the task force had updated and said at least 3,913 children had been separated under the policy. It said prior court orders reunited 1779 children with parents, leaving 22, uh, 2217. The 1779 likely were done largely under the Obama administration and the records existed for them to be reunited. Um, 
but there is 2217 out of that number unaccounted for. And there is, um, that is a separate estimate from the 1,000 or so separated families that the task force is seeking to reunite. So a few thousand, you know, somewhere between 2,200 and 3,700 children we've kidnapped and put into the system and lost track of. Yeah. You mean literal Nazis kept better records than Trump's eyes? Yes. Fuck them kids, U.S. government. Um. Oh God, Rev. Yes, Rev. I, I've. Um. Yeah. And, and, and. All right. So you want to know how exactly fucked this gets? Right. Okay. So this is this is more complicated than just oh hey we found your mommy and daddy right. Some of the children were at such a younger age, and they have been gone so long that they now consider the families, their host families in the U.S. to be their family. In certain cases, the children are with sponsors who they literally refer to as mommy and daddy now. So. In the words of the head of this reunification task force, it's not as simple as saying we're going to put you on a plane and reunify you when you're done. Because now we would re-re-separate them from their parents again. Trauma times two. We strip them from their parents, put them into a fucking system, let them grow accustomed to new parents, and then turn around and tell them we found your original parents, say goodbye to mommy and daddy again. It's, who wants to fucking see if we can traumatize these children anymore while we're at it? Some sense, yeah, basically. It's it's the same fucking process, some sense. The end of the day. Who wants to be psychologically traumatized? Trademark. Uh, yeah. Good job. Good fucking job. Um... And here's a fun one. <laughs> um, here's a fun one. A federal judge in Midland, Texas. Oh, a federal judge. Sorry, not in Midland, Texas. But it's a U.S. district judge. Guy by the name of David Counts. He has waived qualified immunity for officers Kevin Brunner and Alexandra Weaver. Why? These two cops worked at a public school in Midland, Texas. They seized a 14-year-old from her family's apartment because her mother left her alone there. Not for years, not for months at a time, because her mother simply left her 14-year-old daughter home alone for a period of time in an afternoon. They took the 14-year-old from that residence. The officers refused to let the girl call her parents for hours, nor would they let her pick up the phone when her father called her. They searched the family home without a warrant. So... The mother and the father of this uh, of this young adult has filed a lawsuit against these officers, and they said, "We enjoy qualified immunity. You cannot sue us." Well, U.S. District Court Judge David Count said, "In fact, you no longer enjoy qualified immunity. The state is waiving it. It's gone." 
so the lawsuit can progress. Um, they will be personally responsible and liable for their actions on that afternoon. Um, yeah. Whoopsie. Fuck him. Yeah, get fucked. Exactly, Coda. Are we still talking to this person? What's the... Why are y'all even playing with... Whatever. Enjoy enjoy your play toy. If you get bored of them, you know what to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, if you get bored of them, you know what to do. Um, There we go. Crystal just redeemed uh, 30,000 uh, channel points to uh, time out Cybot. Dude, I was left alone at, like, age 15 for, like, months on end. Uh, my folks uh, literally moved to another town for a summer while I was 15 and left me in a house by myself. Like, I was good all fucking summer. Like, I hung out with friends. We went and partied. I ordered pizza. It was a good fucking time. It was just fine. Just fucking fine. 14. Glazy. She was 14. Which. I mean a 14 year old should be cap A 14 will be fine. 14 year old will be fine. Um, I literally lived by myself when I was 14. Yeah. <laughs> well I mean that could explain a lot. Puff's pipe. Please lay down on the couch here. Um. Got left alone for hours at age nine. I mean, I was fine alone at 12. Yeah, Glazy. Glazy. It's 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 literally, like, it's the state attempting to tell parents how to, like, raise their children at that point. It's just, it's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She had a 14-year-old. She's a young adult. She's 14. She can, I'd be fine with her being left there for, like, a month by herself as long as proper preparations were put into place, right? Not just, like, pick up and leave her alone out of nowhere. But, no, they had made preparations. She was fine. There was methods of supervision. There was routes of routes and avenues for her to seek assistance if she needs it from adults and uh, other uh, other systems. Right? It's not like they just abandoned their fucking child. She was fine. She's fourteen. She's perfectly capable of wiping her own ass by that point, and she um, she had like emergency contacts and shit like that. Being alone is not the worst thing to happen to kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, fair enough, Big Bear. That's fair. And I agree, tech support. A 14-year-old that can't do basic cooking and laundry is a parenting failure. Um, yeah. I, I, so fuck them. Fuck them cops. Right? They stole her. Right? They kidnapped her. They kidnapped her, held her fucking hostage, refused to let her contact any of her, her resources to protect herself, and refused to allow those resources that were attempting to contact her to contact her. They literally kidnapped this girl. I don't think they remember the 80s. Kids were left alone all the time. I was 14. I've been cooking for myself for several years. I, I just, you know, yeah. I, 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 at this point, it's fucking stupid. My discover, my mother discovered frozen toaster strudels, bought those, and I had to wake up my brother. I had to wake my brother up and get us ready for school. I didn't mind at all. My dad and mom worked. What's the worst that could happen to a 14 and 12 year old in Miami Beach? Civic. You have a good. You have a good time. I know you did. I know you did. Um. Yeah, Rev, and for my younger siblings. Good on you. Um, I would have been more worried about what the cops would did do to her. Exactly, Cassidy. That's the camp I'm in for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, oh, and then this fucking bitch. Um, hang on. While we're talking about stealing kids... While we're talking about stealing kids, let's, let's fucking do a little bit... <clears throat> Uh, 
Everyone. Say hello to this Karen cunt. I was 14. There was a game store in town. I got there. It left for six hours. Sometimes alone with complete strangers half the time. Um, this fucking bitch. Right? 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 Let, let, wait, wait for this. Wait for this Karen cunt. Oh, say hello to juvenile court judge Donna Scott Davenport. This isn't doxing anybody because she is a public figure and she has had news articles written about her as well. All right. <clears throat> she had her own system for deciding how police, how the police bring kids in and would dole out extremely harsh penalties to them. Kids were jailed for multiple days for things that wouldn't even be a crime for an adult, such as swearing at an adult. One of the main cases in the report involved the rounding up of a bunch of kids, black, who allegedly watched a fight without intervening not a crime taking an eight-year-old girl out of school in handcuffs who wasn't even involved in the incident and locking up all the black boys involved even though they weren't involved in the fight at all for multiple days she helped her other karens aka judges appointed to uh she uh other karens appointed to run the detention center then helped make the decision to build a new multi-million dollar juvenile detention center that county commissioners joked about in a county commissioner meeting in open public forum on the record that is quote now a profit center for the county this woman makes $179,000 a year funneling black children into a for-profit juvenile detention center. Everyone, say hello to Donna Scott Davenport. She's a judge. <clears throat> Cody, far from the first time it's happened. Far, far from the first time it's happened. Just the latest example. That's all. Yes. And it's not, on average, happening to white kids. It's happening to black kids. Hmm, funny how that works. Donna is your opinion. Bes Donna besmirching. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change your verbiage. Sorry, Okra. Uh, Donna besmirching the good name of Donna Summers. Oh, uh, God, I fucking hate for-profit for systems. Um, cunt. Sounds like the old crackers of the South. I know, right? Karen's gonna can Hey, Karen. Oh, do you think she's an elected one? I don't think she's probably, she might not be an elected judge. Let's, let's, let's look. Let's look, Walata. We'll find out. She is elected. She is elected by Rutherford County. So let's go look at Rutherford County demographics, shall we? Oh, if you're wondering, that's 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 Tennessee. That's Tennessee, if you're wondering. Oh, let's see. Oh. 77% white. 
16.3. It's 76.6% white, 16.3% uh, black, and then a smattering of others, right? Um, white alone, not Hispanic or Latino, 69.1%, right? Um, majority high school graduate, majority not college graduate. Um... So total employment population is 3000 uh, 332,000 total employment is 114,000 the county is 2 thirds unemployed we are talking a predominantly white county in a predominantly poor county where the median, hold on, yep, the median value of owner-occupied housing sits at Yes. This is a fucking funnel. This is a funnel putting broke black people into jail, into the system as children and profiting from it at the same time. Again, Donna Scott Davenport, everyone. Yeah, I, I, I see, Rev. I see. You linked it already. But the U.S. abolished slavery. No, it codified it. The U.S. did not abolish slavery. It just codified it. 13th Amendment just makes it perfectly legal to turn you into a slave as long as we arrest you first. That's all. Dolores Umbridge in the flesh. Um, I've been battling with uh, right wing Christian brainwashed women. Oh, that's that's always a fucking fun time, isn't it, Okra? Uh, direct correlation between COVID and pro life. <laughs> oh, just just wanted to. Just wanted to give a shout out to Judge Karen. Only as punishment for crimes. Yeah, um, what's a crime? Oh, that's right. According to this county and this judge, standing by a fight in a middle school is a crime. Seems pretty arbitrary to me. What's also a crime? Oh, I don't know. Feeding homeless people? Crime. Um, Let's see. Consuming a plant? Crime? Yeah. Funny how that works. Crime is not having a residential address in Arkansas? There you go. Fucking being homeless. Yeah. Jaywalking? Crime. Yeah, funny how that works. Uh, don't forget prison bodies being moved to district court, uh, district count th uh, two, they're, uh, moved to district count to their numbers and don't have a right to vote. So legal voter fraud, if you ask me. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. That's fucking except in Vermont, except in Vermont. Remember Vermont allows prisoners to vote just because you're in jail does not remove your uh, right to vote in Vermont. The, they send ballots to the prison. Um, so just again, pointing out why my home state kicks the shit out of all of your home states. Just saying my state is the best. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, my first interaction was a cop was because I jaywalked at age 13. <laughs> Fuck it, who gives a shit? That's so, bu that's so bullshit, Okra. That's so fucking bullshit. I yelled at, uh, I yelled back at him and said, I'm a fucking j uh, jailhawker, kiss my ass. And uh, I flipped him off and went and smoked pot with my friends on the corner. I respect it. A jayhawker. Okay. Uh, fucking, yeah, I, 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 I respect it either way. I respect it. Um, Mine was answering the door to f six fully body armed uh, DEA agents when I was four, says Rev. My first interaction with a cop. Was a Vermont highway patrolman dressed up in the full like mounty fucking gear, like a smoky, like full on smoky. Um, and I remember tugging at my mom's um, like sleeve because I was afraid to like go talk to him. Um, but I wanted to like talk to him because of the whole fucking costume and shit. Right. Um, that was my first interaction as near as I can remember. Not aggressive. I, I've told where I've told that story enough, like where I where it ended for me. My my shit was the dare program. Um, but you guys have the syrup cartel. Actually, a good portion the cartel uh, code um, is Canadian. Um, they commodify the syrup, um, and so they do large batch. The vast overwhelming majority of Vermont maple syrup is actually small batch independent producers that get either purchased separately for a larger distribution or just distribute directly themselves into retail systems. Um, yeah. Canada is a number. They commodify their, their maple syrup and they, they homogenize it and resell it. It's disgusting. Um, that's why the majority of like maple syrup you buy will be a homogenized commodified version of it unless you source it correctly. You look on the back, it'll say like, you know, made in Canada, uh, like made from maple syrup from Canada, Vermont, something like that. It's just large producers that buy from independence and fucking put it in. But if you buy Vermont maple syrup, chances are you're getting small batch artisanal maple syrup. And you can, you can taste the difference. You can taste the difference. Um, Vermont maple syrup is better than Canadian. Always. Um, Isabel de Puerto Rico. Thank you for the follow. Um, I have spent a decent amount of time in your part of the world. If you are really of Puerto Rico, um, I've spent I've spent a minute or two in your in your neck of the woods. Um, yeah, I, I've I've put my time in in San Juan. Um, yeah. Either way, welcome, Isabel. Shots fired. Quebec small batch is the best shit. Ah, fuck Quebec. <laughs> like, I, I actually unironically like the Quebecois. Um, that I actually do dig them. Um, stop it. Um, uh, see, see, but the province sucks. No, I actually enjoy them. I enjoy the Quebecois. They're absolutely irritating beyond belief, but I enjoy them. Um, so, yeah. But no, it's inferior. I live in the U.S. My family is from, uh, from Awardia, uh and Anyasco, uh, though. Nice. Right, I am Quebecois. See, right, that's why I get along with you. You guys are obnoxious, but I love you to death anyway. <laughs> um, spelling Quebecois is a pain in the ass, though. Um, nice. Um, nice, Isabel. Um. Yeah, I've, I, I, it's one of my, like, uh, the Caribbean is my vacation spot. Um, I, I, it doesn't matter what island I'm going to, I'm going through Puerto Rico one way or the other, and I've spent a decent amount of time in Puerto Rico as well myself. Um, yeah, Dominica or Dominique, uh, depending on who's pronouncing it and where they're from, um, is my favorite island unto itself, but I really enjoy Puerto Rico. Um, I like the confluence of cultures and factors and foods. Um, and yeah, so rock on. Um, but yeah, either way, welcome. Uh, all right, so we talked about the evil Karen cunt bitch. 
um, who's fucking throwing black kids in jail for profit. Um, my first girlfriend was half Puerto Rican. Nice. Ah, thank you for the follow, Dragon. Um, oh, yes, Cassidy. That's that's the good shit. Um, why does America have shit food? I do, Kavas, it doesn't. It doesn't. America has amazing food. America has some of the fucking um, most amazing food in the world. Probably the best food in the world. I will I will die on this hill. It's just your box standard bullshit is, is bullshit, right? Like, if you go to your fuck, But I can go within fucking, sp like, throw... Yes, Spike, we have all the food. We have all the food. Um, and some of the best the best supply lines in the world, right? Like I, I literally can walk to a, um, a Peruvian restaurant from my, from my house that has like so well sourced ingredients, um, and like native people from Peru that have emigrated to America. Right. I've even asked him for, I asked the grandma for Kui one time years ago. Right. I've got Thai, Laotian, Vietnamese, Peruvian, Ecuadorian, uh, of course, of course, Mexican. I, you know, I, I've got fucking like I can get uh, I can get cheese curds from Wisconsin. I can get fucking it doesn't really matter. I can get um, like uh, chipolines. I can get it doesn't matter. I have, I'm surrounded by, yeah, bike, like, come to Detroit, we have it all, like, that's, dude, I'm in Vegas, trust me, we ran supply lines, um, America has the best food, Peruvian Chinese food, the Chinese emigrated to Peru, leading to some of the best, okay, so indigenous preparations, plus the, uh, Hispanic influence from Spain, plus Chinese immigrants into Peru led to some of the most baller fucking food on earth. 100%. I will stand for Peruvian food every day of the fucking week. Uh, Lomo Saltado. You can also have like Pollo Saltado, but Lomo Saltado, it's um, fucking beef. Um, it, is, it is like this crazy French fry beef stir fry. Right, you get the indigenous communities using potatoes. You get the fucking Hispanic influence with like this sort of preparation, and you have this Chinese influence with like soy sauce and cilantro. Right, it is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, I it just stay out of those. Ah, uh, yeah, I too am willing to into guinea pigs. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, no, be over. Like we, we, we determined. I, we, I guess when we determined that on air that it was supposed to be angel dust, but you know, yeah. Either way, um, on task though, um, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Barbecue is literally deter uh, is literally uh, derived from the term barbacoa, which is a Taino word from the Caribbean. It's uh, smoking of sl uh, smoking of meat over uh, green slats of wood, used as a uh, not only a preparation but also a preservation method uh, in the Caribbean. Um, there are Germanic influences that through a Texas, uh, through the Texas and general deep South influx into America contributed to the modern iteration of what you would know as American barbecue, but barbecue as an American concept is a confluence of multiple, uh, immigratory events and, uh, collidings of foods. But the terminology illiter literally is derived from barbacoa, um, which is a Caribbean, uh, uh, creation. I've sampled barbecue all over this country. Uh, <laughs> Rev. Shout out to my Tainio ancestors for creating barbecue. Yep. Yep. Fucking um Isabel. Um it's a good idea, Glazy. It's a great idea. It's just a shit execution. Um, it's a shit execution, but it's a great fucking idea. It's a great fucking idea. Leave all that other bullshit behind. 
come here. We'll run all of the supply lines in the world. We'll put it all into a fucking pot and stir it up and see what we get. Korean fucking tacos, right? Like, I mean, come on. It's an amazing, it's amazing idea, but we, we executed poorly. We didn't stick the landing, Glazy. We didn't stick the landing, man. It's a great fucking like triple lux and shit. And we fucking did all sorts of somersaults off the bar and we fucking absolutely shattered our ankle on the landing. Yeah, like that's, we didn't stick the landing, man. Um. Oh, oh, okra. Um, okay, so I am a North Carolina low country um, whole hog barbecue, uh, a mustard based. If you don't have the mustard, then a vinegar base, right? So I would I, I default to the the North Carolina low country whole hog, which uses a mustard base. Shout out to Maurice's Piggy Park, um, as my as my uh, as my go to. Right. But a vinegar base will work as well. Yeah. Um, Memphis ketchup sweet style is fine if you don't have time to do it properly. Right. If you don't have time to do your barbecue properly, a good barbecue sauce, like in the traditional American barbecue sauce style, can can cover up all sorts of sins. It can erase amazing sins. But yeah, curry tacos are amazing. I will fight anyone over this. Um Vinegar, yeah, um, gyro, um, yeah, like that's, I, I, I have, no, yes, um, oh yeah, civic, cooking okra is a whole thing, cooking okra is a thing, yeah, there's an African preparation of okra that intentionally causes the slime, it, it exacerbates it, it exacerbates it. So it's almost like natto, if you're familiar with natto, Japanese fermented soybean. Um, there's, um, yes. I have been, I, I am, I'm a cook. I'm a cook, kids, right? Like, I, I'm, I have been cooking every single fucking meal for myself for a decade, except for when I was on vacation. Prior to that, I had been cooking for family for years. I was the event cook for things. If you needed, like, barbecue cooked for like smoked for 18 fucking hours or whatever for a birthday party or something like i was the guy that fucking would do that for you right like i i know food and i have been like we've talked about before by age uh, by age 19 i had visited f all 48 contiguous states i have sampled barbecue in the place where the barbecue comes from i have tried the food stuff in the place that makes the food stuff um i've been around i've been around uh, skinny piggy yes nice civic that's a good name um it is a texture thing puka it is a texture thing i agree and i'm not i'm not there for it uh i'm not there for it um yeah it's it's a bit much it's a bit much But uh, yeah, if you use it like Kode said, if you use it to thicken the gumbo, totally good. Totally good. Um, nice, some sense. Nice corner Vietnamese market. Yeah, that's that's always a good one. Um, yeah, no, I, I legitimately think like my favorite, like singular dish outside of like, okay, so whole hog smoked barbecue, Carolina low country style is God food, right? Like that's God food. Um, ain't nobody like the only people who can compete with that is, uh, Filipinos with lechon. Um, that they can compete, all right? But like a prepared dish, there are co more complicated dishes. There are more insane dishes. There are more rarefied dishes. But for myself, lomo saltado, 
is the top. It's an amazing dish. It's so fucking simple and so amazing. Make a batch of French fries, really good French fries. Make a batch of French fries. Get some sirloin or some flank steak, whatever is like a cheap cut of beef for you that like you can cut against the grain that will ribbon out really well. Like sear that off hard and fast. Chop it into pieces. Pull that to the side. Pull the fucking french fries to the side. Garlic, red onion, tomatoes. Saute them in a fucking pan. Toss in the beef. Toss, toss in the uh, toss in the uh, the French fries, red wine vinegar, soy sauce or coconut amino, uh, aminos, cilantro, salt pepper, toss toss toss, dish, verde salsa. It is heavenly. It's heavenly. It's simple. It's perfect. It's starchy and meaty and fucking. It's great. Um. Brandon, welcome. Freedom fries, you call me. Exactly. Um, yeah, we're, we're off on a food tangent, Brandon. We're off on a food tangent. It's, it's, like, it's like a stir fry, but with French fries instead. Verde, I don't like tomatillas. Ah, well, that's fucking... Um, sounds like a poutine that would actually be good. Um... Yeah, no, I'm telling you, you can do the same with chicken. You can make a pollo saltado. You can make anything saltado, basically. Uh, you can make a cooey saltado. Uh, for those of you who don't know, cooey is guinea pig. It is, they eat millions of guinea pigs every year in Peru. They are delicious. They taste like pork. Sorry, kids. Your, your guinea pig is good eating. It's really good eating. Do I sit down and watch cooking shows? No. No, whether it's, I, I don't actually, um, there's a whole, yes, there is a whole ritual with guinea pigs. Um, 13 gerbils in an orange gimp suit. Um, close enough. Yeah. Um, cute and delicious. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. They're to fucking, <laughs> fucking caboose. <laughs> um, they're delicious. They're delicious. Um, they roast up, um, just like pigs, crispy, crunchy outer skin, like just like a good fucking barbecue, just like lechon or whole, ho whole hog barbecue. Guinea pigs roast up the same way. They're amazing. They, they, they're amazing. Sorry. It's really difficult to get them in the U S but in Peru millions a year, millions of them get eaten a year. Um, oh, okay. That's your keyboard for shortcut for Adobe. Um, <laughs> they're at PetSmart. Yes. I wouldn't want them. They're bred poorly. Um, good eats is amazing. Uh, shout out to Alton Brown. Um, Alton Brown is a fucking OG badass motherfucker from, uh, for, through all time and uh, time and space. I, I have nothing but love for him. I don't know who fucking shouted out Good Eats there. Um, but let's see. I'd have to. Uh, oh, Cody. Cody shouted him out. Um, yeah, I love Alton. I got nothing but love for Alton. He's, he, yeah, he was an inspiration early on. But these days, no, I don't sit down and watch a fucking cooking show. Um, You know, a lot of people, uh, black people laugh at white people because they love their dogs more than anything. And I really think uh, a lot of you need to think about that. I mean, I don't. And if you've got a, um, if you've got a good dog preparation recipe, I'm, I'm open to hearing it. But from what I understand, they're not great eating. That's, that's the issue is they're not really great eating. Um, uh, Rye, I think he did come back for something. Um, Rev, it's a show. Um. You must love pernil, shredded pork, uh, uh, pork shoulder with mojo. Way too heavy for my liking, but it's a Christmas staple. Yes. Um, um, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know really what you're getting at there, okra, but I mean, 
that it's always been that way. Um, uh, it's it, for years and years and years. It's it, human beings have. I mean, we cut a deal um, with dogs generations ago. It doesn't, dude. And it's not just white people that have this either. Like hunting packs in Africa and Europe and across, like it's, yeah, like we, we cut this deal with this animal untold generations ago. You're part of the pack, right? We have the same iterative deal with other humans. Look, unless shit gets real, we don't eat each other, right? Right? Unless shit gets really real, we don't eat each other. We're, we're part of the same tribe. We're part of the same pack. We cut that deal with dogs. That's all. We cut the same deal with cats, too. Like, you keep the vermin down in the cities, we're cool. Some cultures do eat dogs, though they're migrating away from it, too. Um, and I've, I've heard mixed results from... Uh, Cupcake. I've heard mixed results as to the flavor and taste of... It's, it's in that category of potentially acquired taste which is always super suspicious for a flavor profile. It's like, well, if you grew up with it, then it's amazing. It's like, yeah, there's some shit that everybody tastes and you're like, oh my God. So I've heard mixed results. Oh, um, yeah, the Mofongo is, that was, that was one of the, one of the first fucking things I, I like when I arrived in Puerto Rico the first time, I was like, who's got the best Mofongo? Like, let's, let's hook this shit up. We're in the Caribbean. Let's get the Mofongo going. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. Somebody, somebody said, somebody mentioned something. It was Cassidy, maybe? <laughs> right. Um, oh, Cochon, uh, Cochon de la, uh, de la, Cochon de la, isn't that suckling pig, Cassidy? It's like Louisian. Uh, it's it's like French, French. Uh, uh, um, it's like French prepared suckling pig by way of like the Arcadians, right? Something like that. Um, platanos. Um, hey, plantains are fucking good eating, especially if you smash them down and refry them again. They're amazing. Um, yeah, I. I I, I have nothing but love for that. Did someone say recipe theft? Oh, who gives a shit? Uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm pretty sure like Cochon de Lay is, um, is suckling pig. Ah, oh, fuck it. Here, let's just look it up. Um, Cochon de L-A-I-T. De Lay. Um... Yeah, suckling pig. There it is. Yeah. Fire roasted. Um, whole marinated young pig, pit roasted, sliced thin, served with gravy on a plate or a pull boy. Go with the pull boy. Um, For all you vegans. Here you go. <laughs> Rev. Um, I make really good Cubano black beans with a quick pickled red onion on top. A good quick pickle. If you've got your hand in on a good quick pickle. Yeah. Um... Technically, I was raised vegetarian. Oh, all right. Uh, learned about Mofongo this week from a new PBS kids show called Almost, uh, Almost Way. No joke. Interesting. Kode, you'll enjoy it. Mofongo is like, it's like, it's like a sandwich, right? Not, not literally in construction, but it's, it's, it's a vehicle for whatever you can have. You can have so many different types of Mofongo. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's an, a brilliant, um, it's a brilliant uh, uh, vehicle for other stuff.
The ones we do are usually bigger than that. Fair enough. Uh, mojo served with tostones, uh, olive oil, butter, uh, butter, orange, and garlic. But I like to make mayonnaise mixed with garlic and a couple cilantro in a food processor. Um, perfect as a dipping sauce. I don't use um, I don't use mayo anymore. I swear to God, this fucking update they did on chat. Um, I don't use mayo anymore. I use um, or sour cream. I don't use dairy product. I mean, that's that's that you have to know that right out of the gate. Um, that's cojones, not tostones. Um, I use coconut uh, yogurt um, for like my cream base for things. So like sour cream or mayo. Like if I'm making a tartar sauce or something like that, I use coconut yogurt. If I need a sour cream for like a, a, a bean chili sort of thing, coconut yogurt. Um, that's what that's what I use as my sort of like catch all. Uh, but, but cheese is life. Love. I agree, Rye. I agree. Trust me. I miss it too. I miss it too, but it doesn't react well. Um, it's too inflammatory for my system. Um, the Cajun microwave. It's been a minute since I've heard that. Hang on everybody. We're going to do this live so you can see it. This is a Cajun microwave. I love that you have one and that you call it that. <laughs> I get the shits with ice cream and milk, but never with pizza. Interesting. Um, it's way too fancy for us down here. Ah, Bobby, those are, those are, those are, you know, it's, are, are you just using a, um, like a Dutch, uh, a Dutch oven and you fucking put the coals on top? How, 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 how far into the redneck are you with it? Or like just, it flares up my nerves, uh, basically. All right, cool. Um, yeah, uh, with her basically it flares up my nerves. It just causes a whole fucking reaction. Um, Anyway. <laughs> this conversation that's happening here is fucking ridiculous. Um, oh shit. All right. Hang on. Okay. I like pie cooked under a campfire, buried pie. Yeah, no, no, uh, buried, cook, cooked stuff that has been buried and like slow roasted and cooked that way. Some of the best food in the world. Um, what's the, um, there's a Mexican, hold on. It is. It's just, it's just, they literally just call it Mexican barbacoa. All right. So Mexicano barbacoa, uh, me, uh, 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 barbacoa de Mexicano would be that's, that's, it's literally just Mexican barbecue. All right. Uh, I was wondering, cause there, there is a Mexican pit barbecue that they, that they do. It's a, there's a pit cooking. Um, but yeah, apparently it's just barbacoa de Mexicano. Um, We'll stay up all night, cook it, and just have a good old time. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since I've done, like, an 18-hour cook on something like that, but for sure. Oh, huh, interesting. Uh, peach cobbler in a tin foil slow roasted underneath the campfire. Mm. Um, yeah. It was the last time I went camping. It's been a while. The last time I went camping, though, I fucking showed up with a like um, with a cast iron pan, and the people I was camping uh, I was camping with were like, "What the fuck, man!" Like they were all they were all just sort of like camping, right? Homie rolls up with a fuck uh, with a fucking cast iron pan, 
and it, you know they're having like granola for breakfast and shit and i'm out here like making food breakfast lunch and dinner and they're getting jealous <laughs> they're like dude i'm like cast iron for life baby one good cast iron pan. You can throw it over a campfire. You can throw it on your stove at home. You can fucking beat an intruder to death with the damn thing. One good cast iron pan. And you can do anything. I cooked eggs in it. They're like, you know, you can cook eggs. I'm like, yeah, well-seasoned pan. You can cook anything in it. There's there's nothing I can't cook in a, a properly prepared cast iron pan. Um... Oh, he did dinner barbarians. I have to uh, give me some beef, pork, some devil lettuce, a pipe and a pipe and a smoke, and I'm good for the weekend. Um, fuck yeah, Bobby! Put a cast iron pan on our barbecue when the power's out. Cast iron is so fucking handy. No, it's the best. It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. Um, I have to actually like because these days I have like a routine, right? I wake up, I fucking do stretches. Like, um, and then I have a pre-workout drink that's electrolytes and amylo, uh, fractionated amylopectin, uh, fractionated barley amylopectin. So carbs, um, easy, quick absorb carbs. Um, and then I do a workout and then I have the post workout shake. And then generally I just have either, I make one large thing and either I have it two times or I just have it one. And that's pretty much how I eat these days. Um, oh, damn. Tapioca on a wood stove. That's that's a thing. Um, oh, my God. What is... Pig pull for a while now, but nobody's willing to do it. <laughs> uh, um, okay, just now. Um... So, does anybody want to TLDR what's been going on in chat? So I haven't paid a lick of attention to it. Like, does anybody want to hook a brother up? What's the TLDR on this shit? Um, <laughs> TLDR, t uh, t too long, didn't read, turd. Um, hey, Caboose, you're fine. Uh, Tunisian olive oil, one of the best so far that I've bought. Greek is too nutty, and uh, we all know most Italian olive oils imported to them from Spain. <laughs> it's true. Interesting. I, I like the Greek, but yeah, I, I keep, I keep Greek olive oil in the house civic but I'll, I'll have to try tunisian i haven't tried tunisian olive oil so i'll have to try that um i've been paying close attention but noms 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 seems to have a weird obsession with the breakdown of white races in the u.s um I'm going to be getting grandma kaiser's kimchi recipe from a cousin because apparently i'm not her favorite <laughs> Eyes are ouch, <laughs> ouch, man. Um, two people are arguing over a useless topic, and I keep poking one of them. All right. Um, Kaiser, I'll be interested. Kaiser, Kaiser, hook a brother up. I'm interested in that recipe too. I want to, I want to see like an old, authentic, old school Korean kimchi recipe. So, like, hook a brother up. Um. Yeah, caboose. Yeah, I prefer to work. I I prefer to work in the like raster territory than the vector territory. It's a pain in the ass, man. I I. Um. 
Um, have cabbage. Barry said cabbage. Wait nine months. Uh, it's, yeah, but I want to know what flavor profile she's putting into it. Someone didn't take kindly to white being defined so coarsely back in the Judge Karen discourse, and now we've been discussing what is and isn't white in the U.S. so far. Um, they're denying the melting pot theory for broader U.S. demographics. I'm like, oh, Jesus, whatever. All right, cool. Fuck you, you anarchist fucker. <laughs> Kaiser, Kaiser, hook a brother up. Fuck that secret council. All right, so they may Bruce Lee you, okay? All right, so they may Bruce Lee you for fucking giving out the secret Asian, like the Asian secrets. I get it, but man, that's a you just got it. That's a that's a risk you got to be willing to take to uh, to make sure the community has a good kimchi recipe. <laughs> it's that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make, guys. <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, let's see. And now we're here where they're assuming a historical, uh, a histor they're assuming a historical things about U.S. history and claiming it as their experience. All right. Interesting. Uh, Civic, I was born in Cuba and grandparents were from Spain, but I do wear a brown face if that's what you're asking. The modern day West Side Story. I'm sorry, what? Um, I'm going to go make a sandwich and watch a horror movie. Have a good night. Stay. Bye, Puka. Enjoy your sandwich. Uh, whiteness is annoying. <laughs> Wither, Wither, congratulations, Wither, you're white now too. Uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna, here's, 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 here's my proposition. Here's my proposition. Here's how we, here's how we end like white supremacy and white privilege. Everybody's white now. Just, just, everybody's white. Since white is a fucking clusterfuck of a, de uh, of a like demographic term anyway. And we're like, is Italian white? Cause they're not. Like, you know, like is, is Spanish white because they're not like, you know, but they are so like everybody's white now job done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, it's hard to explain, but Photoshop's vector tools are better than Illustrator's, but Illustrator can do more with vector than Photoshop can, plus Photoshop can't S export SVG. It can't? Holy shit, I'm pretty sure fucking Affinity does that. Hang on, let me check. Let me pop Affinity Photo really quickly and just check this. Um, yeah, oh yeah! Fucking SVG and EPS natively out of uh, Affinity Photo. That's interesting, Caboose. Um, I got shit for being Irish today because they were added to the white paradigm to be against the racial masses. <laughs> oh. I've been colonized by Kai. <laughs> Everybody's white now. <laughs> or nobody's white. We could do that. We could go the other direction. If, if that's, we can, it doesn't matter. It's the same end result. All right. So either everybody is white now or nobody is white. Let's just go with that. Right. Fucking <laughs> nobody's white y'all. Um, go fucking figure affinity can export SVG. Yeah. Like I, I was like, Jesus Christ. The only thing affinity can't do that Photoshop can do caboose is programmatic macros. There's no scripting. Um, there's no scripting in, in affinity yet. And it, it kills me. I, I wish we had a scripting capability. Um, but beyond that, there's really not much that affinity doesn't do these days that Photoshop does. Um, my great, 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 my great grandfather's rolling over in his grave. Yes, bike. See, that's I, 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 I don't understand it. Like, dude, it's a giant biological spaceship, like hurtling through a f firmament of what we're not entirely sure. And there's just billions of things walking around this biological spaceship, and we're obsessed with these artificial divisions and imaginary lines that we draw on the ground and shit like that. I just don't, at the end of the day, I just don't fucking get it. It like, it can, it legitimately confuses me. I understand like the, the I understand the, the, the theory of it. Right. But like in practice, 
How do people fall for this shit, man? This is rough. This is bullshit, y'all. It's not complicated. You human? Yeah, they're human. Fuck it then. Who cares? Like, you, you were you born on Earth? Yeah. Well, there you go. Like, that's that's pretty much all I give a shit about. Like, are you you're you're from this planet, right? And it's not that I'm gonna fuck uh, I'm gonna persecute you if you're not from this planet. I just got we got a much bigger conversation if you're not from this planet. Um, but if you 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 from Earth, you from Terra uh, Terra? Are you Terran? Right? Like, I don't. Cool. Welcome, welcome to the club. Well, but I'm from this specific part of Earth. Yeah, I don't give a shit about that. Like, it's, it's so weird. It's so weird. It's born in a manger. Fair enough. Um, what if I wasn't born on this planet? Then we have a much bigger conversation to have, Zippy. That's all. I got questions. And can you get me off of this planet? <laughs> um... Adia, I, I really like that rhetoric. Adia is just, just fucking use it, it. One, it encourages a thought pattern that I would rather not encourage. Um, and two, like, yeah. So Caboose is going straight America up on this bitch, right? Like that, that's, it doesn't matter where you're from. If you come here and you do your thing here, you're American, right? Caboose is straight up going full like America, but Terran version. If you're here, you're Terran do done. Doesn't matter if you're from Alpha Centauri or whatever, you, wherever you're from. If you're here, you're fucking Terran. Hey, oh yeah, Cassie, I figured that. I figured that. Bro, we're evacuated. Take me with you. Oh yeah, I, I put that shit out there. Like if anybody gets a, catches a ride on a, on a spaceship, remember your homie. Um... Civic. The Olive Garden theory of interplanetary immigration. <laughs> when you're here, you're family. <laughs> I, dude, I thought that was the coolest. That is one of the coolest fucking things about America, right? You, dude, dude, you go to Japan, immigrate to Japan, you will never be Japanese. Immigrate to China, you will never be Chinese. Right? Like, immigrate to Nigeria. You will never be Nigerian. Immigrate to America. You be American as soon as we fucking... Like, do you have a Big Mac in your hand? and an, Do you have a Big Mac in this hand and an AR-15 in this hand? Congratulations, you're fucking American. Right? Like, it, it's... It, being American was... Used to be more about a mindset than it was about any sort of formality. Right? Like, just, just be here and do your thing... And voila, you're American, you know, abracadabra. Like that's, that's like that. That was one of the cool ideas about this place. But, you know, racists, slave owners, fucking segregationists, supremacists of all stripes. <sighs> like I said. We definitely didn't stick the landing. Um, yeah, in Korea, I won't even be considered Korean. In America, I'm considered both. Yeah. Um, I'll take an American-made AK instead. Carpe, that's fine. I, 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 yeah, that's fine. Um, I mean, tech support, go for it, but. It's, it's the fact that we're still talking about this shit. Look, it's 2021, right? Like, why is there a Columbus Day still? It's a goofy fucking thing. Hey, you know this guy who set out to find India, even though the fucking Spaniards, according to documents, knew where India was already? But, um, you know, uh, and they knew where the New World was too, by the way. They knew their trade routes to India. But hey, this guy's going to go set out to find a new trade route to India. Um, lands on the fucking continent that they already knew existed. Um, declares it India. Um, oh, by the way, never landed on the continent proper. 
only landed in Caribbean uh, in Caribbean destinations. Columbus himself never set foot on North America. Um, genocided, pandemic, um, and slave traded. And um, yeah, cool. Let's let's build a statue to him. Let's name a day after him. Um, like why why is this even a thing? <laughs> like. Yeah, oh yeah, Carpe. He never went like Columbus never set foot in fucking North America proper. He was down in the Bahamas. He was he was in the Caribbean. Fucking he never even set foot on this fucking area. Um It's weird as shit, man. It's weird as shit. Um And I mean, this is all you know whose fault this is, right? This is Washington Irving. This is Washington Irving. This is his fucking fault. It's okay. So here, let me. So I can get all the details. A history of the life and voyages of Christopher Columbus by Washington Irving, a fictional biographical account of Christopher Columbus written by Washington Irving in 1828, published in four volumes in Britain, three volumes in the U.S. It was the most popular treatment of Columbus, treatment of Columbus in English-speaking world until the publication of Elliot, uh, Sam Elliott Morrison's um, biography, Admiral of the Ocean Sea in 42. It is one of the first examples of American historical fiction and one of several attempts at nationalistic myth-making undertaken by American writers and poets of the 19th century. It also, remember kids, if you want another reason to say fuck Washington Irving, it also helped perpetuate the myth of the flat earth. I, I. Yeah, no, Washington Irving did a whole bunch of fucking damage. Um. Um. Hold on. There's one that's escaping me. Um, okay, give me one sec. I'm just going to need to pull his fucking bibliography. Oh, tell me it's not, um, It is. It is. Paul Revere's Ride by Washington Irving. Um, yes. Also, Washington Irving. Good night, Zippy. Um, you know the guy who actually, like, Paul Revere rode, like, three feet, right? He, he rode, like, three feet. The guy who actually did a ride comparable to what is, like, generally talked about is a guy by the name of Israel Bissell. Yeah. Washington Irving is 
super fucking obnoxious. Super fucking obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> Kaiser. Um, I'm pretty sure Longfellow also... Yes. It was Longfellow that did a treatment of Paul Revere as well that he went to college with. Like there's there's some there's something kicking around there. I'll fucking Oh, fuck, whether I'm just going to I'm just going to kick you back your points. Like there's too many things floating around in my head right now. Um There's a story in there somewhere. Really, Twitch? Really? God damn it, Twitch has been so slow recently. Um, their mod panels and shit really, like Twitch? that. Really? Oh. God damn it, Twitch has been so slow recently. Um, you know, why would you ever remember that setting of volume for me too while you're at it? Um Alright, so did he ever reply? Uh, just FYI, <clears throat> hang on. Y'all remember the dude who was talking about his how his ISP in California um, filtered out porn? And I told him, send me, um, send me a fucking link or something. Like, uh, uh, you know. And, oh, yeah, well... <clears throat> This is, this is what he sends me. Hang on. It's a government enforced nationwide filter where you have to contact your ISP to kindly ask them to unblock. If I recall, uh, as, uh, I'm not British, but mainland European. And then he sends me a link to a guardian article about David Cameron, internet porn filter censorship creep. And remember when he couldn't come up with his IS, the name of his ISP, but he tells me the name on his router, which is Orbi, which is an, a Netgear brand router. Yeah. Funny how that works. Funny how that works. But no, it's I, I'm in Tahoe, and that's the way. Mm, yeah, caboose. So he lied. Yes, a uh, rough pass for the SVG file. Mm. You know what though, caboose? That looks amazing. Hey y'all, um, opinions. I mean, I know it's a first draft caboose and all of that, but I think it looks great. Um. All right. So first off. Like here, like the, the full DGen logo, for those of you, like we're talking hats and shit like that, right? The full DGen logo has a lot of paint splatter detail in it and shit like that, right? There's actually a lot of fucking detail in that, but we're, we're, we're dropping it down in resolution, um, and making it cuttable, right? So we can like do like vinyl for it. Um, I think this is a fair and accurate representation. I don't know if it's going to be cuttable yet. We'll have to get with Cassidy on that one. Um, but like if I put this in like rainbow fucking vinyl or something like that and slapped it on a hat like this, this, the shit y'all kind of want um, or slapped on other shit. Cause I know some of y'all don't want X, Y, and Z, but this, this seems like a fair and accurate representation of it. I like it caboose. I think it's great. Um, yeah. Slap it on my ass. Um, all right. Yeah. 
Uh, ca- we'll see. Uh, we'll see what Cassidy has to say about it and whether it's cuttable. Um, and then we'll go from there. But I love it, Caboose. I think it's great. Thank you. Uh, Wither, yes, not scissors. Not scissors, Wither. A, a vinyl cutter, which is an automated... It's like a printer. It's like a printer, Caboose. Uh, Caboose, not sorry, Caboose. It's like a printer, Wither, only it's got a sharp thing where the ink would normally go down, and it cuts that way. It's better than my positive biohazard fucking shirt. Civic, is that like a, like a, I, I'm, the only thing that springs to mind is like an HIV sort of positivity representation shirt. Like the, the biohazard with the word positive generally, I mean, in gay communities would be representative of HIV status. And that I have to ask Civic, is that what that shirt's about? I'm okay with it. I mean, yes, yes. More destigmatization surrounding that, but yeah, it is. Okay. All right, that's that's rock the fuck on that you have that that you rock that civic and that you're you're yes, I yes, I, there's there's not much more beyond that I can 3D stabber yes the 3D stabber. Uh, the shape of the E makes the E look shifted to the right. Oh, you're right, it does actually carpe or is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Carpe is right on that one. I don't know if that matters, but carpe is right on that. It does, it does kind of look like it's, I don't know. It looks like it's slightly shifted to the right somehow or twisted or turned or some way or shape or form. Yeah. Easy fix, says Caboose. Cool. Um, thanks for pointing it out though, Carpe. Um, I had an ex who told me she had HPV after about seven months. Gee, thanks for the heads up. Um, that's, that's dude. Okay. That's, that's something I can say the gay community is much better at these days. Like they're, they're better at, they're better at like, that's the conversation. Like if you're hooking up, it's literally like obligatory conversation. You know, here's my HIV status. The last time I was STI tested was I will be tested again in I'm COVID vaccinated. Like the, the, the gay community is really good at that for like hookups and dating and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that just, that's, mm. I mean, one, you know, one epidemic and a genocide later will make you share that information. Sisters are pro graphic designer. I got an eye, for, a graphic eye from her. Yeah, kerning. Yeah, kerning. Um, my, the wifey made me pass a test before we did anything 11 years ago. I mean, I wouldn't, dude, I wouldn't, that's just, I mean, I'm looking to get dick and shit, right, right? Like, I'm, I'm going to take you at your word, and that may bite me in the ass, but, like, yeah. Like, it is, Civic, it is no big deal. The The gay community has basically fully destigmatized HIV positivity at this point. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Like, it's not a thing. Uh, there was a time when if you were pause, it was difficult uh, in the gay community. There was still a, t- a stigma attached. Um, but now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's so much avail- availability of prep and knowledge. And it, it just, you know, yeah, it's not an issue anymore. Hey, Gemma. Eh, there's a thing. There's a thing. It's, you know couple you know you know how it goes Gemma. um yeah so yeah i'm i'm super happy about that civic that the gay community has managed to like fully destigmatize it pretty much to as far as i think we're gonna get it um i'm highly phobic of needles i basically rely on former partners results should probably be better about that but i haven't got laid in over three years anyway hmm. right now for um yeah, that's always the, it's literally an obligatory conversation doing a gay hookup. Like, just, 
what's your status? When's the last time you got tested? And now we add COVID vaccination into the boot in as well. Are you are you COVID vaccinated? Uh, Rev, um, did your mother? This is gonna sound fucking. Um, Rev, did your mom ever hold you? when you were at the doctors in early childhood and tell you it was going to be okay as you got a shot this is this is some this is some woo woo shit here but choking interesting i mean no judgment just always interesting to see the spectrum and rainbow of people that wash up on my shores um Okay, so the reason I asked that, <clears throat> I used to have a needle phobia as well. Interesting. Okay, so I used to have a needle phobia. Um, and I was having shoulder and back issues from a lifetime in IT years ago now. And I went to an acupuncturist here in town, who is the acupuncturist, by the way. Um, the reason acupuncture is a recognized practice in America is because of his father. True story. Um, he put the needles in the in my back, and I started having, I started getting, I like, I started getting flush, and I felt like I was going to pass out. And they put a bell right there for you to ring if you're fucking yeah. So I immediately started ringing the bell. <clears throat> and I, he comes back in and starts taking the needles out. He's like, you're okay. Just, you know, relax, deep breath. He goes, I want to ask you a question. He goes, did you ever get a shot when you were a child? And when you got that shot early on in your life, can you remember your mom looking at you and telling you it's going to be okay? I said, yeah. He said, it's a source of trauma for a lot of people. He said, there's a re he said we don't address it your parent lies to you they tell you it's not going to hurt they're going to tell you they, they tell you it's going to be okay your mother your most trusted person in this world looks you in your face and says a bold faced lie and then there's physical pain associated with that object he said if it legitimately fucks people up on some level he said i just want you to think about that just take a minute I'll be back. And he comes back a little while later. He says, you want to try number, you want to try round two? And I said, sure. We'll try round, no round number two. I've been fine ever since. I, I, I was in that same camp, Rev. When I got my uh, chicken pox vaccine as a kid, I stood up and passed out. Just passed the fuck out. Almost cracked my head on a cinder block wall. I was in that camp. Deathly afraid of needles. Um, I would, I would have physiological reaction to needles. Now I give my shot. Uh, I give myself shots all the time. I can I can do needle play on my own fucking genitals. It doesn't matter, right? And legitimately, the 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 changing moment was when Doctor Locke sat me down. and He said, basically, it's fucking trauma to deal with your deal stemming from your your relationship with your mother. And I was like, oh, and it just clicked. It just ever since then. I haven't had a single issue. Just saying. It worked for me. It worked for me. That was whatever. It it did a thing. It did a thing. Whether it's completely psychosomatic, whether it's completely fucking, you know, just placebo effect or not, it worked. Oh, yeah. Tech support. I've never had chicken pox. I have no herpes in my body whatsoever. I can't get a cold sore. Um my mother was the least trusted person in my life <laughs> carpe there's a mountain of unaddressed thanks mom trauma um hey uh what was his arms off uh thank you for the follow remember when i got a liter of blood take it that's hyperbole but okay uh taken out of me a lot of tests because they didn't know my sickness was bacterial or virus i had 16 vials varying sizes some some of the little ones some of the larger tubes um but 16 vac tubes taken out of me in one go one time um and it um yeah 
I remember this dude walking by who worked there, and he just comes in and fucking pins me to the wall. And it, I was, you know, immediately I'm like, what? And I, he could tell. I, he could, took one look at me as he walked by the room. He's like, he's about to pass the fuck out. Thump. Hit him to the wall. Make sure he doesn't fall out of the fucking chair. Oh, love that dude. Um, there was no vaccine when you were a child for chicken pox. Yep. Um, I think I'd probably need to get it redone. It only lasts for so long. I think I might need to redo it. <laughs> Jesus, choke. That's a mood. Um, <laughs> uh, they crucified. Just they do the same thing all over again, J. Miles. No big deal. Uh, ah, yes, Caboose. I remember. I remember us discussing that, Caboose. Um, so it was probably a bag. It was probably a bag. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, this thing. I kind of wanted to. I kind of. This is long. Here, everybody, go read this. I'm gonna put a link in chat, but like, just just save this on your tabs. Um, it's called the trigger effect. Here's the quick summary. In September of 2017, a police officer shot and killed a, a queer college student in Atlanta. By the end of the year, several of the student's friends had been arrested, and two of them were dead. It's worth reading. It's worth reading. Just, just, I'm going to just put that out there. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. It, it, there's some very interesting psychology. Fucking Grossman may come up. It's a whole thing. Link in chat. Um, Why are you marking that new? I'm in the channel as we speak. God damn it. Um, yeah, it's like I said, just, just read it. Um, oh, in here, since we talked about this earlier, might as well. Wait, why am I? How is that possibly? Oh, it just didn't update. Thanks, Discord. Let me pull you guys. And myself. This is a heat map of UFO re reported UFO sightings from 1906 to 2014. Because it's one. Okay, there's there's two factors. All right, one. You see the world of the world's broadcast and the Roswell UFO incident. All right, that kicks off a whole era of it. Two. Notice who's developing advanced aircraft. 
right? This is, this is, hey, RV, this is two things combining. This is a cultural phenomenon in combination with a military industrial complex development cycle. We started building advanced aircraft and nobody had reference. Nobody had reference points for it psychologically. And then they were given a reference point for it. War of the Worlds and then Roswell, right? This is, this is the, this is it. And then you start to see the sightings, right? This is why it's so prevalent. People seeing things they cannot identify in the skies. Well, who's building things you can't identify? Everybody sees something they can't identify from time to time. But if you happen to be building entire fleets of them, chances are you'll see a lot more of them. That's why I love living like... A, I've talked about them before. My neighbor, like right through that wall, right? House across the way. He worked at Area 51. Took the Janet flight on a daily basis, right? Area 51 was one of the best, best, best disinforma disinformation campaigns ever run. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, sure, aliens, whatever. Yeah, sure, we'll just encourage that in popular media. We'll let you run with it. It's the Lockheed Skunk Works test facility, it's where they develop next next generation propulsion and uh, aircraft systems, and they test them out of there. That's why it's got the world's largest fucking runway. It's absolutely ridiculous. There may be real, real extraterrestrial craft, but the vast 99% that are witnessed are just advanced craft that you don't have a reference point yet for. That's all. But there are exceptions. Let's see if they still allow it. Yeah, they still allow it. Let me see if I can't compare this for you. Oh, let's see. That one. Is there a scale that I can? Ah, there we go. Thousand feet. Cool. Two thousand feet. There we go. It's a big fucking airport. That's what Groom Lake is. It's a big fucking airport. Um... Rudizar is off. Um, I grew up in the wilderness of Vermont, wandering basically as a feral child. I have consumed all of the drugs. Um, I have spent time in the desert alone. I have spent time in the w northern wilderness alone. I have wandered through the Smoky Mountains, the Appalachian Mountains in, in the south. Um, I have seen no Bigfoot, no Big Feet. Um, I have seen no Mothmen. I have seen no extraterrestrial craft. I have seen no greys. I have seen no chupacabras. I have seen no ghosts. I have seen no... <laughs> um, no wampus cats. Um, 
Yeah, staircases in the woods I've seen, Rev, but that's ex- that's explicable. That's not an inexplicable phenomena. Um, staircases in the woods are a thing, um, especially in like uh, places like the Appalachians where settlers would build up in the hills and those sorts of things. Years go by, the encampment is gone, the house decays, the stairs remain. It happens. Um, I, I, I've, I, like I said. Either way. Um. Yes, wait there. That's it. They're just hiding from me. Um, I know, right, Caboose? We're going to raid over to Mitre. We're going to raid over to Mitre. If you're not already following Mitre, you should be. Um, Mitre is ADHD personified. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Fu- f- four of you, fuck you. Um, I will call you fuckers out for fucking leaving early. Um... Mitre is ADHD personified, um, but he will be making music. He will sing. He will talk about stuff. Um, it's a good time. Um, so, oh, fuck five of you. Fuck five of you. Um, that's right. That's right. I will call you fuckers out. Um, oh, 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 somebody just got retracted. Um, either way, night stream tomorrow, maybe I have a thing to do tomorrow. So tomorrow's stream is tenuous. We'll see. We will see. Um, but tomorrow's stream is a little bit tenuous. Um, Kai has a thing he's doing. Catch you all later.